just under a mile in length, Iowa Speedway is the shortest track on the NTT IndyCar Series calendar. But what it lacks in distance, it makes up for in tension. Tonight, 22 hungry drivers take to the track for 300 laps at more than 170 miles an hour. Add in a Midwestern heat wave, and the boiling point could come early. Last week's winner, Simon Pagano, has already had one hot streak this season, one that carried him to a win at the Indianapolis 500. His Toronto win moved him closer to championship points leader, Joseph Newgarden. Newgarden won the season's other oval race today in Texas and is six races away from winning his second IndyCar championship. And while Newgarden and Pagano chase repeat titles, five-time champion Scott Dixon looks to chip away at the points lead at a track he's never won at. And Alexander Rossi, just four points behind Newgarden, the closest he's been all year. Are you ready for 300 laps inside the bull ring? Let's go. NBCSN welcomes you to coverage of the Iowa 300. It's race 12 on the 17 race schedule for the 2019 NTT IndyCar Series. Under the lights here at the 7 eighths of a mile Iowa Speedway. And the heat wave that has been present for so many days has been extinguished down to 73 degrees here at almost 10.45 local time, 11.45 on the east. And drivers have been told, strap into your cars. We're ready to roll. Takuma Sato, best qualifying Honda after three Team Penske Chevrolets. And there is the man who sits on the pole position, Simon Pagano. He is set to go. Massive storms roll through here. There were two cells that just wreaked havoc on the speedway. But now things are clean, they're dry, and ready to go. And it's a fresh track that will greet these 22 drivers. This track produces fast, dynamic racing. And we're going to see lots of that close tonight. Multi-groove racing as well. 955 passes last year, PT. Are we going to see that many this year? I think there's a good chance that we're going to see that many. The new aero package last year was was new to everybody. They've got it a little bit more figured out this year, but the track was mega hot for qualifying yesterday, so the speeds were down. But right now, I would say it's perfect conditions for racing. Almost ready to get things going, and we're going to send you down trackside momentarily. A trackside PA and a special message. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 years ago today, Americans first heard the words, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. As Apollo 11 astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first man to set foot on the moon. Today, we honor that historic occasion and the people who made it happen as we welcome Apollo 11 Mission Director Gene Krantz from Mission Control in Houston, Texas. Please direct your attention to the big screens. Hello, Iowa race fans. I'm Gene Kranz, the Apollo Flight Director, coming to you from the recently restored Apollo Era Mission Control Room at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Thank you for joining us in celebrating the 50th anniversary of this extraordinary American achievement, the Apollo 11 lunar landing on July 20th, 1969. It is now my honor to christen tonight's NTT Indy car race at the Iowa Speedway, the Apollo 11 Moonwalk 300. We're go to race. Race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome Des Moines Partnership CEO, Jay Byers. Drivers, start your engines! Come down 
up front straight. It's a pretty bumpy track nowadays. Fifth, sixth gear, depending on uh, traffic and, and qualifying, going into one. Uh, there is so the much there is so much asked the of the drivers in the NTT IndyCar series. They are elite athletes. Yesterday performing in temperatures where there was a heat index of over 110 degrees and they're racing around here at over 175 miles per hour. Today, a lengthy delay. They've had to just schedule their bodies and minds and get ready, Kevin, for tonight's race in completely different conditions. And Simon Pagano has all the momentum. The pole sitter, an Indy 500 winner, strapped in looking for two in a row. But Will Power, his teammate, pulls off right by him while Power is looking for his first win of the season. He's also thinking championship, and the only way to potentially do that, he's got to get some wins, more than 100 points back. Last time he won, also a short oval last August. Dylan? And Kevin Alexander Rossi sits four points back of points leader Joseph Newgarden. Coming into a racetrack, he hasn't had much success at a best finish here of six coming into tonight. He knows it's crunch time. He's got to make up points here. That's going to be a tough task against a guy like Newgarden who gets around here so well. Robin? Well, Joseph Newgarden's made it look easy at times this year. Three victories, comfortable point lead, and suddenly he looks in his rearview mirror. He's only got a four-point lead over Alexander Rossi and his other teammate, Simon Pagnos, breathing down his neck. This is one of his favorite tracks, if not his favorite track. So tonight, he needs to deliver again to hang on to that point lead, Lee Diffie. It's all to play for under the lights here in Iowa. The Honda two-seater is on track, being driven by Ari Leyendike Jr. And his passenger tonight is the CEO and founder of Vin Wiki. Right, That's Ed Bolian. I don't know if you can hear me, but we're out here in Iowa. Ed, we can hear you and glad to hear that you're enjoying the ride. In the evening, after a nice rain shower. <laughs> Ed's doing his own commentary, which is great. It means he's having, a, he's having a good time. He's having a terrific time. So six pace laps. And while those six pace laps are uh, underway, let's walk you through the grid one more time. It's a Pagano Power front row. It's a Penske 1-2-3 with Sato on the second row. James Hinchcliffe, Alexander Rossi, row three. Graham Rahal, Scott Dixon, row four. Ryan hunter Ray, Marcus Erickson. Great qualifying inside the top 10. This track is absolutely cleaned off, fresh and ready to go. No rubber. Watch for Kanan and Marco Andretti to immediately go to the high side, the super high side, and start making moves. As is the case which is with each and every IndyCar broadcast, we have a variety of onboard cameras to show you, and let's take you around the various onboards right now. And let's kick it off with the 26 Gainbridge Honda. Zach Veach, they had that fuel leak issue. The Andretti team did really well, and with thanks to Gainbridge, we will have this perspective tonight for Zach Veach, starting in 20th position. Connor Daly is back in the Gallagher Chevrolet for Carlin, and it's Gallagher that provides us this view of the driver from Indianapolis. Clydell Manufacturing has been a great supporter of Santino Ferrucci, and they bring us this on board for the 19 Dale Coyne Honda entry. Three-time winner is Ryan hunter Ray. We've heard through him th from him throughout the night, and Auto Nation provides us this nose cam footage, which is so cool, and especially under the lights. Don't get confused tonight between Scott Dixon and Felix Rosenquist. They've got very similar paint schemes on their cars, but we'll tell you how to look for it. And PNC Bank are on both cars, and they give us this viewpoint there. So we thank them for that. One cure aboard Graham Rahal's Team RLL Honda. And again, another nose cam. And then Auto Nation and Alexander Rossi will give us plenty to look at tonight for sure. And then how about his good friend James Hinchcliffe, the Lucas Oil onboard camera for the Arrow Schmidt Peterson Honda. Can Hinch defend his victory from a year ago? So after many hours of sitting on our hands, getting ready, waiting, and the drivers wondering, would the track ever be dry? It is, and the field is under the lights here in Iowa. Side by side into turn one. Will Power goes around the high side. Already three wide. Look at that car on the outside. Is that 
I think that was Santino that Santino swept Santino around the outside. So he went super high. Track is clean up there. He's still on the high side. Look at Sato. Takuma Sato around the outside of the bright yellow Menard Chevrolet of Simon Pagano. Sato is on it in the second. Sato being super aggressive early in this race. Already up to P2. Simon Pagano started on the pole. Already has dirty air back to third as his teammate Joseph Newgarden looks around the outside of him. Oh, he came up in front of him, did a slide drop there up in front of him, and Newgarden had to check up. He had a little run on the high side, and now he takes the air away on the bottom. Santino there, still up on the high groove. There's Hunter Ray up on the high groove. Colton Herter is on the inside of the DHL Honda. So he's got that inside run on Ryan Hunter Ray. We go aboard the Auto Nation on board there, and this shows you how they can run side by we'll side. Multi-lane racing. You can hear how much they're in the throttle. Yesterday, we didn't hear that. The cars were sliding around. Right now, a lot of grip. Colton Hurd is able to run the low line. Right Clear Ryan Hunter Ray. Get inside that top 10. Here comes Connor Daly. Marco Andretti, who was all the way in the back, is moving Before forward. Eight. Zach Beach has made up three positions from his starting spot of 20th. So positive start. Okay, one back. A lot of side-by-side -side action, guys on the bottom, guys on the top, guys in the middle. So guys working three grooves. Teammates right here with Sage Karam and Derek or uh, Connor Daly. Now Simon Pagano is working his way back. Where has Newgarden gone? He was right behind Simon, and he's disappeared out of the back as his handling already gone away. Look at that gap already. About a second and a half, Paul, he is in arrears of his teammate Simon Pagano and it's Will Power with more than a second advantage over Takuma Sato who was spectacular. Let's relive that start for the driver of the My Jack Honda. Have a look at this. See here, starting fourth, it's really just all about how much courage do you have to run the outside as Will Power clears off of turn two it gives Takuma Sato some clean air down the back straightaway. And going into three here, it's just about being aggressive. He gets the outside, gets the throttle down, and clears Simon Pagano off of turn four. And go on board Santino Ferrucci. with Santino. He has passed more cars than anybody so far this year, and he's racking up more cars on that, are, three on that wide, list. Look at that dig, high dig, side dig, move. Dig, I love it, man. Clear. He, he said yesterday, what was it like to be out there when it's hot and slick? He said, I don't know, I'm 20 years old. It doesn't matter. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to expect, though. So he got the throttle, went from 12th to 6th on that start. James Hinchcliffe's been able to steal a spot back, so Ferrucci has made up five from the start. So, too, has Ed Carpenter in the Auto Geek Chevrolet. Here is Ed. And he is running his in car. 12th. His car was a rocket last night in practice when it was super hot, looking like he's got it right again tonight. But the guy who doesn't have it right so far is Bordet. He hasn't even made up a position, and he's looking at getting lapped here pretty soon. Frustrating start for Tony Kanaan too, Paul, because he's dropped seven, now eight positions from his starting spot. And Kanaan is down to 21st. See Bordet there, Andretti. able to get around Marco Andretti, but these cars, as you said, Paul, they're already 15 seconds behind the leader on an 18-second lap. Will Power is coming quick to he's lap right there. these guys. He's right there. He's, he's the fourth car in the picture there. So here, Simon has lost a little bit of ground. But look at here. Sato is now backed up to Newgarden as Newgarden gets by. But Power now is in traffic on the tail end of the field. Oh, oh Sage Karam. Sage Karam in the smart start Chevrolet for Carlin. Doesn't look like any damage, and he's still got he it okay? Running. Try to so, get it going if you can here. I don't think he hit anything. I think he just looped it. He's got a little bit little bit of damage on the left end fence there that's gone on the I front wing. in contact with somebody because that's the inside. So look, we'll get a look at that for you guys. But I think he might have had contact with somebody and just looped it. Looks like rubber, actually, or a, a, a tire mark on the the nose cone there. This will tell us more. He's all by himself, or is he? Now oh. it's Felix Rosenquist that runs across the front wing there. Lucky break there for Felix. So he just lost it on power coming off of four. 
real lucky break there for Felix that he didn't have more damage than that. But not much damage to Sage's car. He'll change that nose and get it back going. First full course caution as the Iowa 300 is finally underway. Still under caution here in Iowa. Not quite half the field came in to pit. I mentioned earlier about the uh, two Ganassi cars running a similar paint scheme. Felix Rosenquist on screen who was involved in that accident with Sage Karam. He's got the big blue nose down the middle. Dixon's car is primarily orange there, so that's something to look for. And we've got some radio from Rosenquist. Have a listen. Yeah, it feels a bit weird, but uh, I don't know if the front wing is damaged. It looks like it's bumping around a bit. Yeah, the front wing is damaged and the right front tire is down. It's going to feel bad. Just stay packed up. When the pits open, we will come in. When they And obviously that was prior to Felix Rosenquist coming in uh, to the Ganassi pit and getting a new front wing and nose assembly put on the number 10 PNC Bank car. So getting ready to come to green. And when Will Power made such a promising start. Simon Pagano took a little while to stabilize and got by Sato. Here comes Joseph Newgarden in the background. The points leader is keen to get closer to his Penske teammate Sato. He's had a chance to reset and regroup. Let's go back to racing green flags here in Iowa. It's going to be really interesting to see the guys that took tires Hunter Ray back if they're able to come through the field. But a good restart for power as Newgarden is under pressure from his teammate. Great move, Newgarden on the inside of Simon Pagano. Joseph Newgarden seemed like at the start of the race just being a little cautious, feeling things out for the first few laps. But since then, he drove by Sato for third, aggressive on that restart, goes by his teammate Simon Pagano for second, going to chase down his teammate Will Power for the lead. Rossi still on that bottom line. He has been stuck to that bottom line all week, and I have not yet seen him run up the track in the middle groove or the high groove. James Hinchcliffe there in the black and gold. Arrow Schmidt, Peterson, Honda, fending off a fellow Honda driver. It's this man, Super six. Santino Ferrucci. Santino making a high move here. He's got the momentum right there if he can get back to the throttle. Lee, we spoke to Santino earlier this morning talking about how he liked this place. First time here, he says, I love it. Car slides around, you gotta really get up on the wheel and just get after it. And he's having a great race so far, running seventh. Scott Dixon, having a good race. Carpenter. Carpenter's having a good race. He's coming through the field like he's on fire. So he just went by Dixon like he was standing still Whoa. and changed lines mid-corner as well. So That shows how good his car is right there to have Scott Dixon dive across his nose. He saw the car just wiggle a little bit. But Ed was able to go to the second lane, keep the momentum up, and eventually get around Scott Dixon. He started 17th. He's already inside the top 10, yeah. running ninth. He's chasing down Erickson right now, who is in eighth place. But look at this guy right here on new tires. Look at the grip this car's got. Watch the 28 DHL Honda of Ryan Hunter Wright, three-time winner here in Iowa. He is at the lead of the group. That's Thanks, all stop for new tires. He's only up one spot since the restart, though, PT. I really thought he would have a lot better speed early on, but he's looking to get around Connor Daly for 12. Well, it's really going to pay dividends as we get more laps on these tires. When these guys get up around 50, 60 laps, he's going to have 20 lap pressure tires. So I really think that's going to help play out for him later on because it's there was no, no penalty for him to come in and get the tires. on board here with Connor Daly. He was solid yesterday, had good speed, was fifth in the final practice. They were very pumped up, one of the best practice sessions they've had. But we see Colton Herta here going around Scott Dixon to get inside the top 10. It seems like Scott Dixon just doesn't have the handle on his race car so far. Not yet, but don't ever count Scott Dixon out. He will be a factor. At some point, it's usually at the end of the night, we've seen him struggle before and then get his car right. It's a long race. We've got 300 laps. Dixon's drifting back to 11. Right PT 
really seems like his car might be loose. He's having to lift real early in the corner. Didn't want to put a lot of steering wheel in it. Yeah, right now this guy looks like he's on rails. Will Power has a two second lead over his teammate. And right there, Simon Pagino is right on the back bumper of Newgarden as they go through one and two on the low line. Kumasato has done a good job to hold off Alexander Rossi and there's another one lining up to get Scott Dixon as Ryan hunter -Ray inside. Dixon makes it easy for him and I think Dixon's just nursing that car to the first stop. Yeah, already back to 13th. Spencer Pickett looking to get around him. Scott Dixon's in trouble here because he wants to get to the first pit stop but the problem is the pace that he's running right now, by the time they get to that pit stop, he's going to be a lap down. Well, we'll see how fast power comes around. The problem he has right now is all these guys that he's racing are on fresher tires. And here comes Graham Rahal, who's going to try the high side. Scott Dixon keeps the high side, takes the air off of Rahal's car. It's always a, it's always a chess match on these ovals. If you go high, you go low. You, you kind of got to guess what the car in front of you is going to do. And if, if your spotter's real good, and you mirror drive a little bit, you can almost just drive in the other guy's line. Scott Dixon having to run that second lane, PT. I really think riding on board with him, he's very, he's very loose right now. He can't turn the steering wheel. The reason he's running the second lane, it's bumpier on the bottom, but by running the bottom lane, you have to turn the steering wheel more. If you do that, the car gets even more free. So right now he's hanging on, but we see Graham Rahal, his car's not very good. He can't get around Scott Dixon, even with fresher tires on. Keep in mind, Will Power race leaders running laps in the mid 19 second range. And Scott Dixon has already drifted back almost 13 seconds behind the race leader. Before too long, he will be falling into the danger of going down a lap. He's doing his best to avoid that. Ray Hall's through now. Scott Dixon had to give it up there. He's still up on the high line. And he's going to be under threat from Zach Beach now, who dives down the inside once he got the air taken off of his wing. Beach almost came close there to hitting the back of Scott Dixon. Yeah, was just pushed up the track and right, right, almost ran there. out of space, but he's clear there. now. Clear, clear. As a driver right now, Scott Dixon, you're just helpless in that race car. Your car is not handling correctly, and you're just hanging on, and Kevin, you have more. Let's talk strategy now here as we get halfway through this first in or so, and it's more going to be about the Firestones. They can go over 90 laps is on fuel, but you're thinking about tires. Now, the plan originally, and I think especially for cars like Will Power, Joseph Newgarden, and Simon Pagano, I really think they were thinking about going shorter on stints and going four stops. Now, cooler, less tire degradation, plus a caution. Three is definitely in play, and those have already stopped are thinking about four stops in the early going a true night race at Iowa Speedway and it's Team Penske one two three as Dixon and Beach go banging in the early going as we welcome you back to Iowa Speedway there is a second full course caution and we have just been notified that it is for some sprinkles of rain And while before the yellow flu, Will Power, who led 46 laps, relinquished the lead to his teammate to, of Joseph Newgarden, very similar to last year, a little bit later than last year, on board with James Hinchcliffe. And Santino Ferrucci has been a young man on a big power move in this race. These two guys have been going at it lap after lap. How close do you like it? It doesn't get much closer than that. Looked like a little bit of side draft in there. Uh AJ, like they do in NASCAR, and there you see the rain, which is not good. It's a little bit heavier than I was hoping it was going to be, and we hope it stops immediately. Saw some great battling before the caution came out for these raindrops. Seemed like almost a carbon copy of last year. Will Power leading the race, got to lap traffic, and once he got there, he stalled out, could make his way around the lap traffic, and once that happened, Joseph Newgarden was able to run him down, get his car in a better position, find a better lane, finally clear Will Power and get to the lead. Yeah, 
So there's been a couple of cars that just happen to be from the same team that are the biggest movers in the pack so far. Spencer Pickett, who got his one and only career podium here a year ago, has made up nine positions from his starting spot, and his boss and teammate, Ed Carpenter, has made up eight. That is a very productive opening stanza for the two Auto Geek Chevrolets. Nice work, and we understand the race is being red flagged right now. Yeah, and it's coming, coming down good now. there are 54 laps in the books remember in these conditions we thought we may have been facing this at the Indianapolis 500 to be honest this year as long as half the race has been complete it can be called but we're not even close to that at the moment so that's the uh, that's the live ra uh, radar that we have for you but uh, obviously right here at the Iowa Speedway, which is about 30 miles east, directly east of downtown Des Moines. There's a little bit more rain than what the radar suggests. Hopefully this is just a quick little squall. And these fans have waited all day to get some racing in. And we hope this is just a quick little thing and it does, the track doesn't completely saturate with water. It hasn't yet. And if that rain stops, we can get back to racing fairly quickly. RP wanting to get over to Loudon tomorrow to watch his, his cup guys. Uh, he'll do whatever it takes. This guy, he never sleeps. He works all day and night, so he's game to stay up. At the Daytona 24 hours, stayed up 24 hours. So watch his guys run so when you work for roger penske paul we both know you got to have your your phone always at full oh, sound because yeah. he could call you at three in the morning say hey i'm landing we need to talk about something this is spencer piggott's or just a portion of spencer piggott's progress that has seen him make up nine positions from the start he was one of those guys that took tires on that first yellow flag and made good use of them was 16th on the restart and was able to start driving through the field. Definitely made an adjustment there to where you make the balance better. And both the Ed Carpenter racing cars are, are really fast, running ninth to 10th. Go there. You can see their latest car just working very well on the bottom of the racetrack. And if you can do that around Iowa Speedway, get your car through the bumps and be able to hook that yellow line like that, it makes passing very easy, especially as the tires start to go off. Yeah, and let's not forget that he's putting a move there on the three-time winner here, Ryan hunter Ray. So well done, Spencer Piggott. Well done, Ed Carpenter Racing. Super start to this race. Absolutely. Those cars are fast. So, Kevin, I think if we get, get going again, I think those two guys are going to be in the fight with Penske that looks like they have a stranglehold in terms of being at the front, I think these guys are on the move. Yeah, I spent quite a bit of time with both Ed and Spencer on their uh, on their bus today talking about uh, what they expected and both felt really good about their opportunity. And specifically Spencer, he said, I'm gonna be really aggressive early because both were starting farther back than they wanted to and they always fear, everyone does, the reality of if you're in the back, you can get lapped really soon. So Spencer said, I need to get up to the front, at least to the mid pack real soon to protect myself from getting lapped. And he's been able to do that. Remember last year, he started back about where he's starting in this race, 18th and finished second. He said, I just kept learning all through that race. He wasn't a rookie last year, but it was his first full season. So last year, this was the first time he raced at Iowa in IndyCar and he felt a lot more comfortable by the end. He's paying dividends this year. Kind of tells the story uh, nowhere near as severe as what we all uh, witnessed and experienced earlier this evening. Uh, with, I mean, the rainfall was immense earlier uh, with that pretty violent storm that blew on through over top uh, Iowa Speedway. So now we kind of hit the pause button once again. And Kevin was alluding to, if you get back there, you fall into the danger zone and go down a lap. Only two cars are not on the lead lap. That's the two involved in the accident earlier, Felix Rosenquist and Sage Karen.
You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by the all-new Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. And by NTT, official sponsor and technology partner of the NTT IndyCar Series. As we welcome you back under red here at Iowa Speedway, waiting for this uh, brief shower to pass. And uh, while we're in the break, the boys on pit road, uh, Kevin and Robin and Dylan, just said it doesn't appear uh, as heavy as what it does on our pictures. So um, cross our fingers and let's hope that we don't lose the track, so to speak. There's a Chevy driver update. Gives us a look at who is where and the championship leader at the top at the point in time when the red came out. Here's Dylan Welsh. Well, we're with Santino Ferrucci. I'm going to try to not do what Townsend Bell did a couple weeks ago, and that was uh, nearly smothered to Kumasato with the microphone here. But Santino's been on the move here early, started 12th and uh, up to the sixth spot, I believe. Yeah, six. So what's going right right now? You've been aggressive at the start. How do you feel about your race car? Yeah, you know, race car feels good. There's a lot of laps to go. I mean, this is a 300 lap race, and uh, just want to keep it out of the walls, stay clean early, just pay attention, and uh, you know, go racing from there. It's a fun one, and I'm enjoying it right now. I think I had a pretty decent start just listening to my spotter up there, Poncho, telling me to go high, and Poncho, don't tell no lies, man. So we're going to keep working it. How different has it been compared to what you expected just with the cooler temperatures? It's been really different. I mean, it's weird after all the rain. The track feels really green, really good. And, you know, I think uh, I think our car has been been pretty decent to start. Uh, working the weight jacker a lot, but you know I feel like everyone's pretty loose, not just myself included. And uh, you know I just want to continue working on it from there. And uh, obviously it's good to be past tension, clean air. And uh, I was working Rossi, but you know those guys got a lot of experience and they're not easy to pass, so should be a good one. He's been fast so far. It'll be fun to watch him continue to march forward. That's Santino Ferrucci who runs sixth. Kevin. Hey, by the way, Dylan, really good news. I'm not feeling any raindrops. I see just a teeny bit of mist. And what's also good is it's really stayed windy. Even though, even though the drops got kind of big, when it stops, they'll go back to racing almost immediately. I just don't think that this is going to be very long as long as we don't get more rain. All right, here's Zach Veach inside the cockpit. A uh, big scare with a fuel leak right before the green flag got out and picked up six positions. So, Zach, tell me how it's going so far and what that's like, wondering whether you're going to make the grid. Yeah, so far, I mean, things have just been trying to figure out the balance. I think everyone changed so much with the cool temperatures that everyone's just feeling it out. Everyone's running different lines. I'm pretty happy on the bottom. It seems like a lot of people are happy up high, so hopefully that comes to us, but right now it's a bit of an advantage. What feels different from running in the heat of the day, now running at night in 25-degree cooler temperature? The uh, 200 extra pounds of downforce is pretty nice uh, with these temperatures, but yeah, I just I can't thank my crew enough. I mean, uh, 55 laps ago, we didn't think we were going to be able to take a green. And uh, if we keep having a day like we are, it's, it's going to be a good night. Getting a look at Zach Veach's start, getting hairy there side by side. Can you see that over there on that monitor? Oh, I can't see it too much, but uh, I was there. So it's been, uh, it's been pretty tight. But, you know, that's what we love as an American. I love short oval night racing, and to be a part of it's just so cool. Good work. Zach Veach is moving his way forward. Robin? All right, Tim Cedric calling strategy for Joseph Newgarden. We talked to Joseph after qualifying yesterday. It was the shortest interview I've ever had with him. He was so mad. You know, he had a great advantage in practice, and we just saw a nice power move to take the lead. So I doubt if you were as concerned as he was. No, obviously he was pretty competitive, so he didn't want to be three out of three yesterday. But, uh, yeah, I think today he was patient there at the beginning, and you saw he just waited his turn. And uh, if we can keep that patience all night and the weather get out of here, I think he'll be in a good place. He just seems – he, he, this racetrack just seems to be his. He's so – you're not watching him in the middle of turn one exiting. He's, he's on another planet sometimes. What do you think it is about this track and him? I think it's the key is just being patiently aggressive. You know, you saw when when um, Will got out there in front a bit. Once Will caught traffic, uh, it slowed him up a bit more than what it did Joseph. And we saw that last night. And I think Joseph was really good at timing his passes and, and has a car that, you know, he, he works on it a lot to get it right in traffic. And he's able to run that half a lane high. And you see the guys, you know, Ferrucci on the start and some of these other guys are able to to make a two-lane racetrack out of it and use it either lane, and some guys are stuck on the bottom. So I think he understands what it takes to, to be able to pass guys as well as be fast. We were thinking that maybe with the temperature dropping 30 degrees and 
a night race that things the Penske advantage might not be what it was in qualifying, but it looks like it's still pretty strong. It's early though. I mean, we've had track position the whole time. Um, you're still going to have comers and goers, and I, I think it's going to still sort out a bit more. But uh, the clean air and the track position obviously helps them beginning of the race. But I think it'll get more interesting as time goes on. Okay, when this race ends at 4 a.m., are you going to go with RP to Loudon to watch the stock car race, or are you going to sleep? We'll talk about it then. <laughs> uh, one thing I do know is he's not going to miss his flight. <laughs> no, the plane will not leave without RP, Lee Diffie. Big weekend for Team Penske, as it is pretty much each and every weekend. Okay, so we're familiar with this. We've been through this already. Uh, that's for sure about being in this weather hole, but at least it doesn't look too severe. We'll see a few. Uh, we'll see a few drops there coming down underneath the um, the lights here at Iowa Speedway. Let's go back down to uh, Pit Road and his deal. Well, we've caught up with Sage Karam as well, who was involved in one of the earlier cautions for that spin that involved Felix Rosenquist. Take us through just what you felt. What did you feel there that led to that spin? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The car started out feeling pretty good, um, you know, in the early laps, and then uh, kind of had this issue going on last night. Um, you know, we were just starting to get looser and looser and looser as the runs were going on. Um, we thought we made some changes overnight to fix it, but, you know, it soon became apparent that it was starting to keep going that way. Um, you know, I was trying to work the weight jacker, uh, put some understeer in the thing, but, uh, you know, I just couldn't uh, I just couldn't save that one. You know, this place is tricky with the bumps and the tires going away. I just feel really bad for all the Carlin boys and, you know, everybody at Smart Stop. You know, the cars have uh, been pretty good all week, so uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, get some laps back and we're still in this fight. We just got to uh, keep our head down and keep pushing. You haven't raced on an oval besides Indy in a, in a while, in nearly four years. What has the adjustment been like getting back into a car here? Um, it's definitely tough. You know, I thought for sure, you know, I was going to be able to jump back in and, uh, and and feel pretty good. But, um, you know, for the most part, I feel pretty good. It's just it's the little things of just being out of it for so long, just the certain little feels and, and, and everything that you don't, you know, you can't get on like a sim or something like that. So, um, you know, I'm working hard. I'm trying to figure it out as fast as I can. You know, these IndyCar weekends go very, very quick. And when you can't really get testing, um, it, it's it's a tough challenge, you know, but uh, nowadays in racing, you got to take every opportunity that gets thrown your way and make the most of it. So uh, I'm going to try my best and uh, fight back here. Thank you, Sage. Kevin? At the front of the field with the leader of the race, Joseph Newgarden. All right, this is like the end of the first period of a hockey game. You get a little reset. What did you learn in the beginning, including the ability to get to the front? Well, it's still tough, I'll tell you that. It's um, There's more grip overall, so I think the lap time drop-off is less. But you're still fighting the car once the tires start to wear out. Uh, the, the rear becomes lively. You start getting really loose. Um, and then when you throw traffic into the mix, the, the car is just sideways entering the corner. So. Um, we're, we've got a handful, you know, even though it's cooler, you're still fighting the thing a lot. But I hope we get that going here. I was just starting to have some fun, actually, once we got in the traffic. But um, I think our Hitachi car is good. You know, Chevy's brought a really great package for us. We're super excited to, to, to be working with those guys, as always. So, um, yeah, we'll see what we got for the, for the rest of this race. Were you out there long enough? You were pretty much halfway through a full fuel stint to learn what the tire degradation is going to be. Yeah, I mean, to, be, to me, it's similar. Um, there's a little less drop off because the overall grip is up. You know, we're making a bit more downforce, the track's cooler, so just the grip level's higher, but um, you still lose the balance of the car, it still degrades. I mean, like I said, you're still fighting the rear of it, uh, the rear of the car when the tires wear out. So, you know, at this point, I, I wanted tires, but we probably needed to go a little bit further. So um, you're kind of looking for the same things, with just a little bit more grip. All right, he desperately wants us to go back to green, Joseph Newgarden. Seems pretty hooked up here tonight in any condition. And remember the kind of fight within the overall championship fight and that is for the championship fight but what I'm talking about is Alexander Rossi and Joseph Newgarden are using the terms of I just need to finish ahead of Alex or Alex saying I just need to finish ahead of Joseph because they came into this race this 12th race of the season just four points apart now so far in this race Alexander Rossi has been running in the top five but in exactly that position in fifth and while the championship leader and his title rival is leading the race, that's going to uh, expand that gap. So as they sit right now under red, the points have fluctuated yet again. Yeah, and this is a huge race for Alexander Rossi. It's out of the last six racetracks, it's probably his worst racetrack, or at least the track he's not most comfortable on. So we know Joseph Newgarden, this is one of his best racetracks. 
He's going to be up front all night. So, and it's early, but Alexander Rossi at this moment just kind of has to limit the damage, run inside the top five this whole race and try to get the best finish possible, even if Joseph Newgarden wins, because he knows that this is his worst track and he's got five good tracks after this coming up. Absolutely, and that pickup on that tire needs to get cleaned up. That's pretty, pretty messy tire. It's even worse when it gets on that rear, because that'll cause the car to go loose on you if you don't get it scrubbed off. But there's a long way to go here. You know, we know that the Penske's are strong right now, and, and Rossi just needs to minimize the damage. So still under a red flag condition for a brief uh, rain stoppage. Hopefully that's gone when we come back. It was a productive time in New Hampshire for Christopher Bell in the Xfinity race. Meanwhile, Sunday, it is the Monster Energy Cup Series race from New Hampshire. You'll see it right here on NBCSN at 2.30 Eastern. 2.30 Eastern where Penske's Brad Keselowski starts on the pole position and Penske is right up at the front right here as we welcome you back to Iowa Speedway. Uh, still in this brief weather hold, but conditions are really, really good. We're talking to the guys in the pits during the commercial breaks, and uh, Robin Miller's down there now. They're saying it's looking so good. Robin? Lee, I can tell you two guys that want to see this race continue. That's Ed Carpenter and his teammate Spencer Pickett. The biggest movers, Ed's past eight cars, Spencer's past nine. You weren't lying, young man, when you told us for the race you had a good car. Well, I'm happy you call me a young man still, one, but no, I've been really happy with the car and race jam. You know, all day yesterday, we just we just had a little bit of a whiff in qualifying, and I was a little worried with, with the cooler temps and way cooler track temps than what we'd had, that the balance would still be good in race trim. But it's been good. I think everyone's going to make adjustments and get better. But, um, you know, I'm happy with the start we've had. That's kind of what we wanted to do is work our way up into the top ten by the first start and then... Uh, or the first stint and then just chip away at it from there. So hopefully the Chevrolet, Auto Geek Chevrolet keeps going forward and you're not going to hurt the suspension. Delara builds a good product. I was sitting on the suspension and Kevin Lee said, you can't sit on the suspension. I don't weigh that much. Can you go high or low? It looked like that thing is pretty good anywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good both lanes in one and two, three and four. I'm not quite as good on the outside. Um, to be honest, it's hard following Erickson. He's kind of, he's running such a late entry and then late, late apex that it makes it a little hard in one and two, and Ferrucci's just running high. But once we clear one of them, we should be a lot better again. All right, Kevin, this guy was always the guy to beat on ovals. He's charging tonight. Don't break anyone's race car, Robin. I'm leaning on James Hinchcliffe's car. And when I talked to people back in the garage today and asked who was really hooked up, who to watch for, we knew about the Penske's, but I kept hearing a lot about the five and the seven with Aero SPM. So how's it going so far, James? Yeah, it's uh, a little bit of a different situation than we've had so far this weekend, obviously. Uh, you know, what made our cars really strong yesterday was taking care of the tires over a long stint. Cooler track temps, cooler air temps mean that everybody's tires are holding on a little bit better. So we were kind of just getting to the, to the phase of the stint where we were hopefully going to start shining. Uh, Marcus obviously seems pretty hooked up. We're finding a little bit of an imbalance in, uh, in my car. It's getting pretty loose down in 3-4. Um, you know, I, I feel bad with uh, Santino there. I got really loose when, uh, when he was on the outside and sort of slid up into him a bit. So big credit to him for giving us the room to get out of that. But uh, it's still early days. So we're going to try to make a change here in this first stop and hopefully try to move forward. Is there any advantage if you have something you do want to fix, having a stop where you can really think about it and talk to your engineers and say, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. Guys, come up with a plan. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, having this much time to kind of chat on the radio back and forth with uh, with Will, I think, has helped us a lot. He's had a chance to kind of go through some of the race data so far. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a bit of an advantage to have some, some time to think about it. All right, thanks, James Hinchcliffe. So, one of the contenders uh, running up front in seventh right now. Dylan? And Kevin Connor Daly has been one of the guys on the charge. He's moved forward from 16th to 12th. So, had about 50 laps here. Connor, have you been able to kind of get a read on what your car is doing and how good it is? Yeah, uh, honestly, one and two feels fine. I mean, this night racing is, is really cool. Um, this is definitely definitely the time we should be racing I think we're it felt like it was wet in three four most of the uh, most of the run there but uh, but yeah it should be fun this Gallagher insurance car is fast so hopefully we can hang with that great American man Ed Carpenter and uh, and go to the front are you having fun just being back in a race car again uh, ask me like once we get it past halfway but uh, hopefully we can pull some wing out of this thing and make it a little bit more stable and uh, and then we'll keep on trucking that's fair Connor Daly he runs 12th right now Lee Good job, good start. Really nice stuff. He's made up four positions from his original starting spot and really starting to settle in 
to the Carlin Racing Organisation in the Gallagher Chevrolet. Remember, Max Chilton not running ovals anymore, so that car needs to have a um, kind of a tag team partner, a tag team driver, and that so far at this stage of the season is Connor Daly. Lee, they're putting starters in the back of the race car. I'm getting excited nice. about that. <laughs> nice. Let's get you up to speed if you've just joined us. It was a good start from Will Power. Watch the silver Chevy on the outside rounds up the pole sitter and his teammate Simon Pagano. It's Kumasato got a good start too on that high side in the blue and white My Jack Honda. He draw, draws level with Newgarden, then says, see you, Joseph. And I'm not going to stop there. PT, I'm going to go around your teammate as well. Yeah, Sato had a good car for about five or six laps, and then he got overhauled by Pagano. But this guy made a heck of a start, and it's so great to see him getting the respect of the other drivers. You know, he came here from Europe with a little bit of a black eye and a little bit of an attitude. Everybody thought he was going to be trouble, but he's done a really great job this year. Sage Karam, it got away from him. They need to make adjustments on this first stop. Get it a little bit tighter and not be so oversteery in the corner. And then right here, a new guard to start a moving forward, AJ. Yeah, this is where we saw Joseph really start to attack the racetrack. He was cautious early on, just getting the feel of it. Got around his teammate Simon there, and then as Will Power caught lap, lap traffic, Will got stuck, couldn't get around the lap cars, and at that point, Joseph Newgarden caught Will, was able to make a clean move into turn one there, and started to pull away. Right as this unfortunate rain started and the caution came out, ultimately going to a red flag, but hopefully that is done now and we can get back racing. 25 minutes, 25 minutes under the red flag. Uh, but now, race leader, championship leader, Joseph Newgarden, looking for his Penske team to fire things up. It's Travis Law, the crew chief, car chief, says, right, I fire it, let's go. We saw that there, 55 laps with already two caution flags, and we've already had 93 on-track passes, PT. Yeah, there's been a lot of action in the middle of the field. Guys making passes, and Santino, he passed a lot of cars in the first two laps, so we'll see again on this restart how racy guys get on the restart up high, down low, and how many guys come in after this red to make a pit stop or change tires and make some adjustments. And that's a great point, Paul, because we've got a mixed bag here because nine of the 22 did come in. That was the four of Matthias Lace, the 10 of Felix Rosenquist, the 14 of Tony Kanaan, the 15 of Graham Rahal, the 18 of Sebastian Bourdais, the 21 of Spencer Piggott, the 28 of Ryan hunter Ray, the 31 of Connor Daly. Uh, pardon me, the 31 of, uh, pardon me, Sage Karam, of course, spun, and the 98 of Marco Andretti. So those nine came in and the others did not. So we've got this mixed group of, so who's going to do what and when will they do it as far as their stop? Remember, only 56 in. You can go a long way here, particularly in these cooler temperatures. So we'll see. Yeah, I really think we're going to for sure see the top nine cars pit. You know, we're going to be, as they open the pits here in a couple laps, at lap 58, lap 59. The tires are getting worn out. Now they're cold. Another heat cycle on them. We're going to see the top nine pit. Really the only car that pitted that was making a big amount of progress was Spencer Pickett in 10. Does he take a chance to stay out for that track position or does he pit as well? Be interesting. We don't know yet. We're going to find out here in a few minutes who's laid out and there are a lot of teams on pit row laid out. I see Will Powers guys are laid out. So they are lots of teams coming in and I see the 21 board is out as well. So Spencer Pickett will hit the pit lane. Radio and James Hinchcliffe. Let's have a listen. All right, dude, so we're going here now. They're going to open the pits on the third time by. We will take it. We have made a tire pressure adjustment on all four to try to help you out here. Super busy pit lane. This will be the first time these guys pit under yellow, and we know from Indy that it got messy when these guys pitted under yellow. We'll see if everybody gets in and out clean. Here we go. And for Will Power at the top of your screen there, he said that the car was moving towards a little bit of a free condition, a little bit of oversteer. They debated on front wing, decided against it. 
He pits from second, Kevin. Joseph Newgarden, the leader, is in. He's in the middle of the screen. That bright yellow Menards car, Simon Pagino. And Newgarden beats everybody out, followed by Power. Then it's Pagino. And then Rossi just barely gets out in front of Sato. So fresh fire stones and speedway fuel for the leaders. Those, those two Team Penske cars, man. Joseph Newgarden, Will Power, rocket pit stops. Yeah, I'm surprised Power's stop was that good because he's not up at the front of the field. He's back in the middle of the pit lane, which is a tough in and out, so. Good jump from Scott Dixon and the Ganassi crew on that PNC bank car. Also, Alexander Rossi, he gets ahead of Takuma Sato. Check this out. Look how close that is. Ferrucci's in the middle, Hinchcliffe's there, and Marcus Erickson's in the back. That was tight. Tight to quite tight, my brother. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. So we're hearing about three or four laps until we go green. Rossi likes this view a lot better. Now he's up inside the top four after that pit stop. Didn't really get a chance to see if he made any changes to the car change the wing angle that's really about all you can do but now he's got a clear view of the Penske's and he doesn't have to deal with any of those other racing those other cars he can now get a good measure AJ of how his car is directly compared to the Penske's yeah and it, we just didn't really that that run was cut so short between the first caution for Sage Karam and then the red flag coming out to really see where all these cars started to play out on the long run a man that was happy that that caution came out was the man we ride on board with right now, oh, Scott Dixon. Time. He was so loose. He was going to go a lap down, but they were able to get in a pit stop and probably make huge adjustments here and gain about four or five spots on the pit stop. Yeah, he was in 16th at the time the red came out and at the pit stop. And the Ganassi crew, a lot of wing change there, saw about two turns of wing down in the front so he was very loose and they turned that front wing down looked like four turns on it with the hand which would be two turns of wing angle i think scott dixon said you just keep turning on that thing until yeah. i have to leave because that's how loose he was so rosenquist returns so too sage Karam. they were two that were forced to stop after that altercation uh, during the opening 50 laps of this race Remember in Texas, guys were turning the wings down six turns there, you know, stop after stop until they got it right. So still a long way to go here. So if Dixon gets that car right, it'll be a factor. Curious to see here, Lee, on how aggressive Will Power is on this restart. He lost the lead right before that caution came out. We've talked about it now. Where is Will pa Power at mentally? Is it already time to play nice with his teammates or is it still go out there, attack, try to get that win? We still have a lot of laps to go in the race, so you probably don't want to be too aggressive with your teammate on the restart. Still too early in the race, but see where he's at here. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, he certainly cannot afford to make a mistake or get into one of his teammates. I mean, you go back to Toronto last week, he dove in on two cars there and got into them and if you if you have that happen with your teammate I've, I've done it with my teammate at Penske and you do not want to have the wrath of Roger when you get back to the truck I've, I've seen I've seen you do it with a few of your teammates at a true story multiple was that you was that, was that you are you talking about you no, no I was, too, I was too far up there <laughs> <laughs> There, uh, there is a man down on Scott Dixon's pit box or Felix Rosenquist's pit box that I'm sure you can talk to with Dario. Okay. Getting ready to go back to green. Lap 65. Hanging back a little bit there, Will Power, trying to get a nice jump here. Green, green, green. Okay. Just backed it up a little bit there. So after almost half an hour under red, we're back to racing. And look at this as a move down there. Sasato goes around Alexander Rossi. Will tried for the high side on that. He's still trying for the high side, but Joseph Newgarden is really strong on the entry to the corner. We saw Sato go around, Alexander Rossi, oh, Ferrucci and James Hinchcliffe renewing their battle before that red flag came out. Ferrucci had said in the interview with Robin Miller, I'm not gonna let these guys that are experienced push me around, and he's shown that running that top groove, 
already back up to six. They Perucci. may have, Paul, they may have banged wheels side to side. Perucci loves that top groove. He's making moves. Now he's going to make a move on Rossi on the high side. I haven't seen Rossi get up on the high side all weekend, but these two right here almost Whoa. touch wheels very close. Last time James apologized. I don't know. I, I don't think he's apologized, but look at this. Ferrucci on Ferrucci Alexander goes, Rossi. He goes by the hardest guy to pass on an oval that there is. Ferrucci running that second groove. High, wide, and handsome up top there. Just showing a ton of speed, a ton of courage for a rookie that's never been here before. I'm telling you what, if Rossi's gonna go anywhere today, he's gotta start trying that upper groove once he gets clear air, but now he comes back on Santino. Side by side, who's gonna lift first? They both lift at about the same time, but who's gonna get back to the power first? What a run from Santino Ferrucci. He's up seven from his original starting spot and is mixing it with the big boys. Get too carried away and make a mistake, Santino. You're a rookie. You're the highest rookie in the field right now, and that is good for your rookie points. That's the difficult thing. As a rookie, you start feeling that confidence. I, I'm invincible. I can run this top right. lane. I can stay in the throttle. All it takes is one little mistake, but he hasn't shown that yet. We know Still Alexander there. Rossi is probably going to be very Still cautious there. right now, knowing his championship's on the line. So it's a tight battle, but I tell you what, not giving up. I tell you what these guys do appreciate is that Rossi, or Rossi is not getting the air taken away from him. Because a, a veteran guy would just chop down in front of Rossi and take the air off of him just to get rid of him. And Santino is running him very fair and very clean. If I was... Santino, I drop it down right in front of him right there. It's incredible how this youngster from Connecticut, who has spent so much of his time in Europe, has just taken to these ovals. Now he's clear of them. We go back up front with Newgarden. Power still right there. And we saw that Will Power was really fast early in the run. He was the quickest car. He's stuck behind Joseph Newgarden right now, hanging with him, but we're really gonna see as they start to get into traffic where Joseph Newgarden shines, and that's what Tim Sindrick said. Joseph really likes to work on his car in practice in dirty air, knowing that he's gonna get there and have to deal with lap tra traffic, and that's where he's the strongest. 170 mile an hour average on the last lap for Joseph Newgarden. So they're all the way up into almost qualifying type pace now. Sure are. And what a mixed night for Andretti Autosport. Alexander Ross is running sixth. An Andretti supported car, the green and white car there of Colton Herter is 11th. And there's just big disparity. Beach is 13th, Hunter Ray is 17th, and Marco Andretti is 21st. So the Andretti cars are spread all over this field. Yeah, one, Very of, the, one of the things that I noticed that those cars, I mean, when we were on gold for practice, you could see the cars were all running different shock configurations to each other. So it's not like all the cars are exactly the same. So that's why you're seeing some guys have got it right. And some guys don't have it right because Marco tonight is really struggling and Rossi's doing all right. This is Dixon in 10th trying to fend off Herder. Seems like that they've made Scott Dixon's car a little better, but it still doesn't look like he can really attack the racetrack. He's still having to be very gentle. These two are battling hard, and, and PT, I go back to remember in Texas. Oh, yeah. These guys got into it right here. Real aggressive move down on the inside by Colton. And Dixon kind of shut the door on him took the blame for that. Dixon said, ah, I shouldn't have shut the door on him that, that hard. But Rossi, unbelievable <laughs> save right there. Maybe a championship save. Yeah, we'll see. After tonight, there's only five races left in this season. So, Hurt is able to clear Dixon, and now Scott is falling back into the clutches of Ed Carpenter. So this is kind of similar to that first stint where the longer it goes, more Scott Dixon drops back. What can he do to rectify that as we're approaching the 100 lap mark here shortly? 
Joseph Newgarden leads the way here in the Iowa 300. Almost by about a second over his Team Penske teammate Will Power. It's a Penske 1, 2, 3 with Newgarden, Power and Pagano. Takuma Sato is the best non-Penske in the first Honda. Santino Ferrucci is the lead rookie and has been spectacular tonight under the lights. And then Alexander Rossi is running in the sixth spot and the closest to Santino Ferrucci. Kevin's been keeping an eye on the Rossi progress. Kevin? You know, it was interesting talking to Alex before the race. He said, you know what? We're going to be smart. I think we may only have about a fifth place car. So rather than take a big swing on it and be awful, we may just settle into what we have. And so far, the car still seems about what it's been. It's OK. And he's struggling to particular error in the track. Can't get him to do what he'd like to. Well, what I noticed both here and Texas, AJ, is that he's not able to drive it deep into the corner. He's got to almost back the corner up. You see, he backs it off a little bit early compared to Santino. So he backs it off a little bit early, backs the corner up, and then tries to get back to the power before the guy in front of him. But you can see right, right there, now. the entry speed is not super high. Yeah, run lane two and three and four. Copy. You got Marco up there in front, been running the middle. He's way off pace, so just stay on the bottom when you catch him. Can't get up off the bottom, AJ. He's just all weekend just stuck on that yellow line. And that's the problem right now with, with Ferrucci running that second lane. He's having to pinch the car even more to stay out of the dirty air. And he's just, he's stuck down there. We talked about it yesterday. He wasn't getting off the bottom lane. And if he's stuck down there, he's going to struggle all night to pass anybody or find any extra speed. Yeah, it's like a stock car. You know very well, you get the momentum when you come up off the top side. You, you roll more speed through the center, and you just get more speed coming off the corner. And when you got to pinch it on the bottom like Rossi's having to do, you got to turn the steering wheel more to get it to turn, and you're, it takes longer to get back to the throttle. And while Santino Ferrucci and Alexander Rossi continue their battle, look who's looming large in the background. Here comes the defending race winner, James Hinchcliffe. And his teammate doing a great job, the rookie Marcus Erickson, right behind James Hinchcliffe. So both these cars seem like they've run down Ferrucci and Rossi, but right now, because these two cars are running side by side and right in front of them is Sato. So Sato's starting to lose a bit of pace. So we saw this last year, James Hinchcliffe, not great early in the run, but as the tires start to go away, that's when his car really starts to find some speed. So this is going to be about a five car battle for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Yeah, this is the major action on track. Newgarden right now, power is kind of right there. They're just starting to get into lap traffic. Pagano's got a bit of a gap, and then there's another gap to Sato, but Ferrucci all the way back to Ericsson. This is where the, where the fight is. Santino Ferrucci impatient to wait for Takuma Sato, pulled out of the draft, went through the middle. Rossi had to take evasive action. That was close. That was really tight. Sato, the, the handling's completely went away from his race car. He's hanging on to it. Ferrucci had such a great run, actually had to check up a little bit off the corner. Rossi got his nose there, but Ferrucci didn't really care and took the chop and was able to clear him. See on board here. Just tried clear to, enough. Tried to go for the pick. He tried to pick, like, cause a pick for him so he couldn't get out, but he just wasn't close enough. And Santino hasn't gotten around Sage Karam yet. Now Hinchcliffe gets by to Kumasato. So that My Jack Honda is falling and falling fast. Ferrucci's lost a little bit of handling, but here's a guy that might have lost the handle on his cars. Will Power is now starting to threaten his teammate, Joseph Newgarden. It looked like Newgarden got loose coming off of four, and he's not able to pull up on that traffic like he was earlier in the race. On lap 104, remember, if more rain comes and the race gets to at least lap 150, it can be called. And I only say that because of the uh, extreme weather we have had this evening. Here's Dylan Welsh. Dylan? Well, Lee, it's kind of interesting when you look at this Penske trio, just the dynamic of the mentalities of each of the drivers. You've got Joseph Newgarden, who's obviously leading the point standing, so he's kind of on defensive mode, if you will. Simon Pagano in full attack, still in the points hunt. Will Power riding in second right there in that silver car. He's in fifth in points, 128 out of the lead. 
he can kind of just risk it all, lay it all on the line, because they don't have much to lose at this point. Will said he is sick of not winning. They want to win here. He wants to win here especially badly, and right now he's applying the pressure to his teammate Joseph Newgarden. Kevin? Yeah, when Scott Dixon would also like to win here for the first time. The defending series champion has lost four spots. Back to 12, Mike Hall calls the race for Scott. Any specific issues that's caused him not to be able to go forward and lose a little bit of ground so far? Um, well, we made some changes on the last stop, and that didn't help. Uh, we just we just keep working on it. we got a ways to go here tonight. Yeah, thanks. All right, Mike Hall, managing director for Chip Ganassi Racing, letting this one come to them. Yeah, it, Scott Dixon's issues is he's just massive loose. This The first run, he was just incredibly loose. The second run, they've made a little bit better. But we see this battle still going on. Alexander Rossi working it. They got two lap cars, Sage Karam, Felix Rosenquist. The problem is, we keep talking about it, Rossi's pinned on the bottom. He can't move anywhere. We see here on board with Ferrucci as he's trying to go to the outside. Sage Karam up ahead. Oh, gets a quick snap with the oversteer on exit, then gets bopped down on the bottom. Has to lift a lot. That allows Rossi to track him back down. Two Honda drivers are going hard at it. They go by Felix Rosenquist. Rosenquist is not on the lead lap, which is a shame because he was down a lap, got himself back onto the lead lap, and then now is back off it. In fact, only the top 16 cars are on the lead lap. Meanwhile, back up front. You know, Will Power has won every year since his first win in 2007 on the streets of Las Vegas. Think about that. That's 11 straight years of competition that he's won. 12 straight years. And so he hasn't done it yet. But this is not the latest in a season where he's gone that he hasn't won. He, he got to race 15 a couple of seasons ago before he experienced his first win on the season. But he's showing tonight that he's super hungry and enthusiastic to get that W here in Iowa. A lot of traffic right now. You got Tony Kanan, Newgarden whistles by, forces Power to go to the high line. Power's been on the bottom. He gets pinched off by Kanan at the exit, and that's really hurt him now. He's lost a ton of ground to the back of Newgarden just as quick as that. And we're gonna see at this point, we're about 60 laps on tires. We're going to see who has the longevity in the race car, who's easier on their tires right now. Looks like Joseph Newgarden, like usual, really good traffic, was able to clear Tony Kanaan, and since then has already pulled out a second. He was under some serious threat when they were in clear air, but now that there's traffic, Powers lost a little bit of ground. He's stuck behind TK. And squeeze in a break. Come back to racing under the lights here in just a moment. And there's some pretty cool racing going on and some wild things. Scott Dixon just got lapped. And those words don't come out of my mouth too easily because it's not that often that you say that. Meanwhile, Alexander Rossi in the Napa Honda has caught pole man Simon Pagino. This is the scrap for third. So Rossi got by uh, Santino Ferrucci and left him behind to fight it out with James Hinchcliffe. And now Rossi's got a, his eyes on a top three spot. Yeah, we keep talking about it. He can't run that second lane, but he may be one of the best cars running around the bottom here. He's run down Simon Pagino for third, trying to get find a way to get around him. He may have one of the fastest race cars on the racetrack in clean air. Well, Kevin, he was right there, and now he's lost ground to Pagino because Pagino started running that bottom line and took, took away Rossi's line, and now he's pulled back away. And Simon's been dealing with understeer a bit throughout the race, and it's really gotten bad. He's a no front grip. I think we're getting to the point late in a tire run where everybody's begging to come in for fresh Firestones, but they need to hang on as long as they possibly can. Sato right there just came out of the pits on brand new tires. He went by Rossi like he was standing still. Now watch this. He's going to come by Pagano. So that's what fresh tires will do for you right here. Sato had just went backwards the problem, since the restart. Problem is he's three laps down right now because he pitted under green. So he's got to wait till everybody else pits and gets back in sequence, but you can see by the speed of his car right now that the tires are king. 
Graham Rahal doing a good job to keep Joseph Newgarden at bay to maintain his position on the lead lap. The one cure Honda is the last car on the lead lap. That's Graham Rahal running in 12th. And Graham Rahal is going to do everything he can to try to stay on that lead lap. But we've yeah. seen Joseph Newgarden, PT, his car is still really good in traffic. He's been able to get stay ahead of willpower early in the tire run and once they hit lap traffic he's put a couple of lappers in between each other now has a over a two second lead on him yeah graham's really going to have to rely on a spotter he's not going to want to get lapped here we're only a few laps away from we think when everybody's going to start pitting so he will need to have the spotter tell him where he is see that he took the air right off of joseph newgarden's car and gave himself a little gap next round of stops are imminent as Sato continues to fire his way through this field, but is still two laps down. Look at the speed difference. Last lap for the leader, 153 miles an hour. Sato, 165. He's flying on those new tires. Here we go. Newgarden on the high line in that second lane and rounds up Graham Rahal very effectively. And that's the thing, if Joseph Newgarden, if he can get to the outside of cars, his, his car right now is very strong on the outside, so once he gets to the outside of a car, it's game over. He's going to clear them. See him trying to lap Marco Andretti for the second time now. Marco has just had a horrific weekend right now. No speed, struggling, going a second lap down. So 11 cars on the lead lap. Zach Beach proudly is the final car on the lead lap, but that yellow, black, and blue Gainbridge Honda is the next one on Joseph Newgarden's list. What a night under the lights in Iowa for the championship leader. 20 laps more, and we're coming up on halfway. We see Hinchcliffe just takes the air off of Piggott. You see the gap all, all of a sudden. As soon as you take the air off the front of another car, they just go backwards. You got to get completely out of the throttle, even sometimes drag the brake to stop the car from taking off of the track. This is first and second from last year. Hinchcliffe Piggott in that order. And we see in that shot there, that's third, fourth, fifth, and sixth running all together. So talking about yeah, Simon Pagano being very having a race car right now with a lot of understeer. He's kind of started to hold this pack up to allow James Hinchcliffe and Spencer Piggott to get into this battle for the top three. Ferrucci's lost a little bit of ground. He's lost some spots to these guys. Now he's kind of backing up. Carpenter moving forward. Piggott moving forward. On board here with Hinch. We're close. So you're working your tools. Here we go. Simon Pagano on pit road, first of the lead bunch to come in for his second stop of the night, and Kevin Lee standing by. Kevo? And they gave up a little bit earlier, the report. It sounded like he was coming to the end of this tire run, but just after that, I heard them say, lap 142, 11 more laps. Well, they're coming in five laps earlier than they wanted to. We see a big turn up front wing, fire to those tires, and Pagano was back out. Spencer Piggott also rolling through on pit lane, making his stop second of the day for him and he is one of the early big movers in this race to be able to pick up significant spots Piggott is going to take firestone tire speedway fuel and he's back out as well we saw guys in texas the guys that took the tires early really made a lot of ground as ferrucci comes in because if you end up going slow dylan it's almost better to get off the tires and, and rip some lap fast laps off and Santino Ferrucci, he came in a few laps early. He was asking, how many more do I have to hang on? So they were struggling, had to bring him in maybe a little earlier than they wanted to just to get some new tires on the 19. Ed Carpenter's had a strong run as well. He's worked his way up into the top 10. In those red colors for Auto Geek this weekend, Carpenter will hit his mark. His goal, like his teammate Spencer Piggott, starting way in the back, was just stay on the lead lap, at least in the early going. Now, you still have a chance to recover if you get a lap down. He's back out after a stop, Dylan. Graham Rahal in as well, has fallen back since the start from 7th back to 15th. Struggling as well, Kevin, as the leader pulls in. Power has Number two, Hitachi for Joseph Newgarden rolling down to his pit lane. He has an easy in, he'll have an easy out with green flag stops here. Four Firestone, Speedway Fuel didn't see any kind of change on the front wing. Newgarden is back out and we'll see how he cycles in with Pagano who's already made that second stop. 
Power is now in the lead. His teammate hit the pit lane. So it will be interesting. Here comes Will Power. This will be key to watch on how this stop is executed and can Power get out in front of Joseph Newgarden? Let's see. He pits from the lead into his box and hits his marks perfectly. A little hip gap on the right front there. We'll see if that costs him. Maybe just a little bit. No changes for tires and speedway fuel as he nearly misses James Hinscliffe coming in. Kevin? And Will Power pulls out right there in front of Alexander Rossi, that blue and yellow Napa car. And in front of him, you saw Scott Dixon also making a stop. We get the sense that Dixon may want to make some changes as well. Looking, yeah, front wing change on Dixon. Looks like about a half a turn on Rossi. They were talking about an air pressure adjustment as well. And Rossi is back out as we see Colton Herta also exiting the pit stall. Joseph Newgarden and Will Power. How does the scrap match up? Newgarden, I think, easily took care of Will Power. Now, talk about PT. We just talk about how much tires make a difference. Takuma Sato was 14th, or 13th or 14th when he started that pit cycle. He pitted 20 to 25 laps earlier, able to get out there and run fast laps. He's back up to second place because of that. But now his tires are old, he's gonna fight that same cycle again. But it just shows how new tires, if you pit, he laps was, earlier than everybody, you can make up a ton of time, but it's a game of chicken. Because if the yellow flag comes out, you're those laps down. Right before Rossi pitted at a big moment. Oh my God, that's totally crossed hands right there. But back to Sato, he was running laps that were 12 miles an hour faster than the leaders, and he has moved him, himself all the way up through that field. So that shows you how strong the tires are. As Santino right here, still on the high side, trying to stay on the lead lap. That's Mateus Lacey's trying to clear there in the ABC supply, AJ Foyt Chevrolet, of which he will do fairly easily, I think, on the high side there. Draws alongside the 20-year-old Brazilian. Will Power, 2.5 seconds back from his, his, his uh, the leader right here with Newgarden, Will Santino draw. Newgarden back to power, or does Santino have the speed to stay in front? Just over two seconds between Newgarden and power. There's Will in the background. Watch this. Will Power is going to run down Joseph Newgarden so quick right now. With these two cars side by side, Ferrucci and Laced, Joseph Newgarden has nowhere to go. He had a three second lead three laps ago. Now one and a half. It's going to be under one by the time they cross this line. Joseph Newgarden, PT. He can't do anything right now. He's stuck yeah. there, and Will Power is making up that time. He's in 170 mile an hour traffic jam right now as Will Power is closing the gap, now down to almost one second. Will he be able to keep that momentum and make a move on Newgarden when he gets there? Takuma Sato is third, but is massively oh. off sequence in comparison to the front guys. As now Ferrucci and Newgarden clear laced, and Newgarden saying, I'm not sticking around anymore. Sorry, Santino, you're about to go down a lap. Newgarden was very patient with those guys. He really had nowhere to go. And once they got single file, he was able to get by both of them. That was smart driving by Newgarden. It really was. And See right there at the line, it was about a 1.2 second lead. And now Will Power has to deal with Santino Ferrucci. And because of that, we're going to see Joseph Newgarden probably open that lead right back up. It's 1.2 seconds now. See if he stretches back out, but Power's on the bottom. Santino hasn't even gone to the bottom yet. He's been up in the high groove all night long. see right here just in that lap will power lost three seconds Whoa. oh passion i think passion might have brushed the wall. the wall what has happened to the pole sitter and championship contender was it a brush or was it just a he's nervous very high loose. Ride? he's loose look at that car it's wobbling back and forth i wonder if he brushed the wall and ben atolik see right here get some dirty air entering turn one He's a little bit wider oh, than he wants to be behind Marco Andretti. Once he gets off that second group, PT, great he gets save. That, was, yeah. that was a good gets save. Gets in that dirty air, but makes a great save. Got the tires dirty, and now it looks like he's got them cleaned up again, and he's back going again. But that shows you the turbulent air. Once you get too close to a car, you can't even get the car to turn. 
He looks loose. He's struggling right now. So after being relatively in touch with his Penske teammate, Simon Paginot is now 17 and a half seconds behind Joseph Newgarden. He's going to get passed by Hitchtown right here. He's all over the back of him. And quietly, quietly, in amongst oh, all the chaos. See that? See the car take off right there? As soon as the air got taken off of the front of Hinch's car, it just took off. Quietly, quietly amongst all the chaos, Spencer Pickett and Ed Carpenter have worked their way into the top five. A few laps disparity between the race leader and Will Power as far as when the two Ed Carpenter Chevrolets pitted, but this is a good strong run from Pickett and Ed. This is what makes Iowa Speedway so much fun to watch, the flow of traffic. Joseph Newgarden was pulling out again, and now he's stuck behind Sage Karam, and Will Power is ran right back to his rear wing, looking, looking to try to find a way to get to him and get around him. And just in front of Sage uh, Karam, Rossi. guys, Alexander Rossi. Rossi's about to get lapped here real quick. And Rossi won't make it easy at all. Sage Karam finally gives it up. Power's right there again. But the next car in line is going to be the championship contender. How hard will Rossi fight to keep on the lead lap and potentially put Newgarden in a bad situation to where he might, you know, make him run up the track or lose the air on the front wing? We will follow that story when we come back. Alexander Rossi in eighth and fighting to stay on the lead lap. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by Honda, an official vehicle of the NTT IndyCar Series. And by OneCure.com. Join us as we race to cure cancer in our best friends and ourselves. Racing continues under the lights here at Iowa Speedway. Lee Diffie, Paul Tracy, our NBC colleague and special guest and former IndyCar driver AJ Armendinger here filling in for Townsend Bell who is racing his IMSA WeatherTech sports car today. Kevin Lee, Robin Miller, Dylan Welsh working pit road. It's Joseph Newgarden, the championship leader who has a 1.6 second lead over his team Penske teammate Will Power. He's trying to put his championship rival Alexander Rossi down a lap. I tell you what, Pagano's about to go a lap down as well because he's just in front of Rossi, Kevin. And let's go through the field and we'll start with Newgarden who was pretty perturbed after qualifying. Felt like he had a pole car. I asked him, why so terse? It was still pleasant, but I'm just a competitor and I really thought we had a chance. And he's got a real chance here tonight. Dylan Newgarden leading his teammate, Will Power. And he rides in that second spot, does Will Power. Has described this season thus far as disappointing. A couple small mistakes have took them out of contention for victories. So far, it's been a pretty mistake-free evening, but are they good enough to beat their teammate? We'll find out here over the course of these final 125 laps. Takuma Sato behind him in third. Keep in mind, he's off strategy here. He pitted about 30 laps earlier than the front runners here. They ran over 100 laps in final practice, trying to get their long run car dialed in. Still a little bit of work to do, though, because they struggled in the long run in that first stint. Kevin? Biggest mover of the race is back there in fourth position. The dark colors dealing with someone with fresher tires right now, one of the Foyt cars. But Piggott running in fourth, and he's only had one finish inside the top ten this year. That's fifth, but they've had much better pace. Looks like it might be coming through tonight. And the boss is next position. In that red car, the number 20, Ed Carpenter, running just his third race of the year. He felt like they were really strong in practice, just missed the balance in qualifying. And he's the second biggest mover up 12 spots. Then it's Simon Pagino in that bright yellow Menards car. We slide back to him, and we just saw him losing positions a few minutes ago. And he's got the daily double of his shoes. He's got oversteer, and he's got understeer, just trying to hang on right now, Dylan. And Kevin right behind him in the eighth, but the sixth spot, rather, is James Hinchcliffe, and he has been very animated in trying to move around Simon Pagino lap after lap here. They're just trying to keep him calm right now and keep his head on straight as they get to the end of this second stint here. They can bring him down and get new tires on him, Kevin. And how about this? Second in the championship, four points back. Alexander Rossi said the car was okay at best, and that's the way it's playing out. He's now lost the lead lap, so Rossi needs a caution to get back on the lead lap and still be a player, but still running in seventh position right now. 
Takuma Sato uh, because you heard Dylan mention there he was massively off sequence by uh, more than 25 laps. He has pitted one more time and a message from race control has been sent to the 98 US Concrete Honda of Marco Andretti that it might be time to come on in for failing to maintain pace. There's got to be an issue there for Marco. He's a race winner here at Iowa Speedway, so that one's going to be pretty difficult to swallow. He's still out on track at the moment, but he is some seven laps down. You see there, Joseph Newgarden was able to get around at the, get around Alexander Rossi to put him a lap down, Lee. Next guy in line here is going to be Hinchcliffe and then his teammate. And both of those guys are going to fight hard. Rossi is still right there. And next set of stops not too far away. We'll see, but it's been Joseph Newgarden's night for sure. Field is under caution here in Iowa, not for weather this time. It was for an on-track incident involving Takuma Sato. You saw it in non-stop. Sage Karam coming from the back. Yeah, we Sato see. checked up. Yeah, I don't know why Sato was going so slow off the corner there because he's got fresh tires. No, you watch the replay there, Paul. He gets, he's behind Will Powers. He's got new tires. He's got such a run. Will slides up. Takuma gets in the gray, has to check up to not get in the wall, and because of that, loses so much momentum. At that point, Sage Karam drives straight through the back of him. And Takuma had just pitted. Look at that. He's way up, way up. Yeah, he was just being on fresh tires, trying to make up all that time. He was behind Will Power, and Will slid up, and when he did that, Takuma was had to check up, get in the gray, and yeah, the problem is Sage was also in the in the dirty air of of Sato, and probably couldn't turn the car down because the front end was just pushing and didn't get on the brakes soon enough. And luckily, it didn't create more damage to Sage's car. But here comes the leader right now, followed by Will Power. Yep, here we go. Two more stops. This will be the second to last one if things go as planned and power hits his box first and the plan is here to make that front wing adjustment that they were thinking about on the first stop will battling just a little bit of a loose condition there you can see it on both ends four tires and fuel for will kevin joseph newgarden comes in and he's going to quickly get out simon pagino also coming down there so newgarden is the first off pit road will power is next pagino just now hitting his marks he really needed this caution because he had pitted five and seven laps earlier than his two teammates Piggott rolled by almost even, and Piggott barely squares out in front of Pagano. Piggott was also one of those that pitted in the early side of that last green flag window, so they welcome this. Those that stayed out here maybe are thinking with another yellow, they can get it home on one more stop. They can do it on fuel, but the tires being able to last may be a little bit of a challenge, so everybody may take the opportunity. And in fact, some of the cars off the lead lap are going to come in the next time they can. So Spencer Piggott finds himself in amongst the three Team Penske cars in a legitimate third place. Remember, he finished second on the podium last year, his one and only IndyCar career podium, and is legitimately there. This has been a really smart race that has been run by Spencer Piggott and Ed Carpenter, Paul. Yeah, I said in the rain break that those two cars of Ed Carpenter's were probably the fastest cars on track and if we got back to green, they might look like they have a shot at these Penske's and breaking up the party, but that tire is not on tight at all right there. And then it drops down. I'm, I don't think it's tight yet. But this will get interesting now with both of the Carpenter cars up front now in this cool condition. I think they might have something. We got outside, inside front, inside front. Get your, get your wing arm. Hold on, we're good. Let's go. The good thing there for James Hinchcliffe was there was only six or seven cars yeah. in the lead lap. Yes. So he didn't really lose a, a ton of track position. He'll restart sixth and, and still be in touch with the leaders there. 
So under this caution after the collision between Sage Car and Takuma Sato, track being cleaned up and just over 100 laps to go. Stick around. It's a busy time within the NTT IndyCar Series. Toronto last week, right here in Iowa now. And next week, it's the Honda Indy 200 at Mid-Ohio, Lexington, Ohio. That's July 28, 4 o'clock Eastern on NBC. Hey, fellas, guess what happens after Mid-Ohio? This man here, the mayor of Hinchtown, James Hinchcliffe, marries his longtime girlfriend, his fiancée, Becky Dalton. So we wish them all Ready. the best. Ready, green, green, green. Ready to go racing, you bet. Let's do it here in Iowa. Final 100 laps coming up. And Piggott and Pagano wheel to wheel through turns one and two. Nice restart by Pagano. He clears Piggott going into turn one. Hinchcliffe, oh, look at this oh, gaggle of cars. Boy. Look at Santino on the outside again. He passed like six cars in one corner. He fell back to 13th, but now as he crosses the line, we'll see where, where he ends up, all the way back up into 10th. That's a wild little bunch that was, but everybody kept it clean. Teammates together on track. The red car is Ed Carpenter. The black one is Spencer Pickett. The two ECR Chevys have been fantastic here tonight. And now Hinchcliffe wants a shot at them. Yeah, Hinchtown looking pretty good here on the bottom. Strong apex speed through the middle of the corner. That was great rolling speed, AJ. Yeah, Ed got in the corner there, just got a little bit loose, had to check up. James Hinchcliffe was able to clear. Alexander Rossi, that, ca that caution was fortunate for him. He had just went a lap down, gets back on the lead lap. Up to seventh. Tell you see what, Fer Ferrucci and Beach going at it now. Ferrucci trying to move back through the pit. Somehow he fell further back. Now he's back up to ninth, working on eighth right there. But if Rossi's going to do anything tonight, he's got to get his car up off the bottom groove because it's not the fast way around. you got to make passes on the high side and on the bottom. Zach Beach in the yellow, black, and blue Gainbridge Honda on the inside of Takuma Sato. Check this out. Watch for the white car up high. Santino Ferrucci, who just rounds this group up. Well, Marco up there just hanging on to his race car really slow. Gets this whole group of cars checked up. Ferrucci says, hey, watch this. I'm going to run the outside four wide, yeah. clear inside the top 10. He's passed more cars than anybody this year on track, and he just racked up a whole pile more. When you got a group of cars, PT, what do you do? You go where they're not. Oh my goodness, around the outside. I bet, I bet Dale Jr. likes that if he's still awake. <laughs> Being 21 years old is a good thing. Making a move on Sato now. This is not for position. Sato's a lap down. Ferrucci is in 11th position. Meanwhile, that last caution, uh, the contact between Sage Karam and Takuma Sato. Karam has been handed a drive through for avoidable contact by race control. Marco Andretti still off the pace. We heard a, some information from race control that they told him to either pick it up or park it, and it, it looks like they haven't been able to rectify anything on that car. It's just a lonely feeling being out there when your car ha is handling that bad. You're just trying to stay out of everybody's way. Right now, at lap pace, he's two seconds slower a lap than the leader, so Marco just wanting this night to be over with. This is fourth and fifth. Spencer Pickett, James Hinchcliffe. Two drivers who finished on the podium here tonight. And I can tell you after mentioning a drive-through penalty for Sage Karam, he is out of his car and out of this race. And there he is. Yeah, it must have been damage on the front suspension from that contact with Sato. Graham Rahal dives down in between two cars. He gets back by Santino right there. Veach gets a run, or that's, uh, that's Marco Andretti. Graham Rahal now up to eight. It's been a little bit of a quiet night for him, but he's starting to move forward now. Next car in line for him is Ed Carpenter right in front. That's Graham Rahal's MO. Just throughout the course of a race, never giving up, always pushing. It seems like when it comes to the end of the race, Graham Rahal is higher running 
than he is for most of the race, so he gets everything he can and maximizes his finishes. This is a good run for Zach Beach. He's only had two top 10 results this year. He could get a third. Ray Hall's on a mission. Zach Beach is chasing him down. They're eighth and ninth at the moment. Rossi right there in the front. Now of Graham Ray Hall. Rossi has just not had the pace tonight to stay with the leaders. He's down there right on the yellow line. He's really never varied off of that line all weekend. I haven't seen him one time go up any more than one, one car length, one car width off the yellow line. We just got word that Marco has pitted and retired that car. It's been a ill-handling car all night, and there he is right here getting out of the car. Unfortunately, just wasn't wasn't on the pace tonight. Frustratingly so. Just so disappointing for Marco Andretti, a racetrack that in the past has been so good at yeah. just all weekend, never had the pace. But we see Spencer Pickett here getting under the lap car of Takuma Sato. Both these drivers right here, Spencer Pickett and James Hinchcliffe, they need really good runs tonight. James has had an okay season, but up to his standards, not what he wants. A season best finish of sixth place. Spencer Pickett at times has had some really good pace, but never got the finish to show for it. His best finish only in eighth this season. So these two drivers running inside the top five having season best runs. Well, this is huge for Hinch because at the moment he sits ninth in points. Has not been a good night for Sato or Hunter Ray, who are ahead of him in the points. He could do some leapfrogging here. He could do some serious leapfrogging. We'll doing, see, though. Doing, Still 82 laps to go. Doing three downshifts into the corners. He's driving this thing, AJ, like it's a road course. Listen to this. There's a upshift, 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 and then into the corner. One, two, three downshifts. crazy to me, PT, because usually you see on an oval, yeah, they have a fourth gear that they use, a fifth gear that they use, and a sixth gear that they use, but to have it where they can go all the way down to third gear in the middle of the corner is just crazy, and it just shows how much these drivers are having to work at Iowa Speedway. Yeah, three top gears to run through the corners. It doesn't make for a great restarting car because you don't get really good splits to accelerate through the gears when you have three top top gears in the car. Look out, here comes the one cure Honda. Rahal, Letterman, Lanigan's Graham Rahal. Eighth at the moment, and he's starting to make some serious inroads on Alexander Rossi. And we talk about Alexander Rossi not getting off the bottom of the racetrack. That's okay on the initial start. When you have good tires and restarts and when you pit, your tires are at their best. You can drive that car down to the bottom of the racetrack. But by doing that, especially as rough as the racetrack is on the bottom, it uses those tires up more. And as the laps get on on your tires, not getting off that low line just really abuses them. And that's what we're seeing later in the runs. Alexander Rossi is struggling. Yeah, the problem on the restarts is everybody goes for the bottom. We saw that with Santino. He went for the high, high line, and it was wide open. And he went around a whole pile of cars, so. This is very Ferrucci. similar to last year as far as the Speedway lap leaders is concerned. 172 laps, now make it 173 laps left for Joseph Newgarden. His teammate, Will Power, led 49. And the pole sitter and fellow teammate, Simon Pagino, says there that he led two laps. The race did actually start under caution to run those two additional pace laps, and therefore, Pagino was credited with two laps led. Here goes Super Santino around the outside of Marcus Ericsson. Boy, he's good on that high line. We just got a note right before that pass that he has made 35 passes on track, and that makes it 36. So he's made more passes than anybody on track tonight. And none, none of them have been on the inside. No, Every they're all on the high been side. around the top. He's got that Superman logo on the inside of his right bicep muscle. He's got the Superman logo on top of his helmet. Well, he's driving super tonight. Erickson coming back, though, on the low line. Tucks in. Erickson really drives this track like it's a big road course corner. See that? He comes in late entry and then Real late apex. This is good stuff, though. You got three rookies in three respective positions. In I kind of like 
Herder, you have Ferrucci in 11th, and Ericsson goes back on the inside of Ferrucci. I like Ericsson's line. He's driving these corners like it's a big road course corner. You watch here, you get a good view. He's going to enter real late and high, and then just dive all the way around the corner, late apex. It's hard to do when you've got race cars around you, but once you get oh, by yourself so here, you can see with Ferrucci, and we see the rookie tracker, Colton Herter right now leading that inside the top 10 mark. Marcus Harrison 11th and Ferrucci 12th. So it's, uh, it's a great rookie class this year. And just like that, there are three retirements from this race. Sage Karam, Marco Andretti, and Takuma Sato. And Lee, we saw him running up front in the early part of this race. Takuma, what was it ultimately that put you out? Well, we got hit from behind and uh, down the wing was so much damage. So uh, I tried to hang in, but couldn't do it, so uh, sorry for the boys. Uh, they did a great job, and uh, all the fans did the remain tonight. It was a shame. It looked like you kind of checked up, got off the throttle, and that led to the contact. What did you feel? Yeah, I think uh, Ryan and the wheel was side by side. I was directly behind him. I uh, got the grade a little bit, so I had to back off a little bit, and uh, it was all under control, but unfortunately, uh, the guy in, in behind maybe couldn't, couldn't see it. Thanks, Taku. Lee? What a shame, because he was having a really good run tonight. Takuma Sato was trying to do what he did here last year and finish on the podium. So, as Joseph Newgarden in the Hitachi Chevrolet crosses the line, only 67 laps to go. There'll be one more regular round of stops. Can he go to victory lane again? 58 laps left to run here at Iowa Speedway in the Iowa 300, where Joseph Newgarden is now starting to put on a bit of a clinic. This is an amazing run. In just a matter of moments, he will have led 200 laps of this race. What a performance from the championship leader who turned frustration into positivity. He so desperately wanted the pole position yesterday. His teammate Simon Pagano got that, and the usually smiley, bubbly Joseph Newgarden was pretty stony-faced. However, Let's put some reality into this. This is how good a run he's having and how, how frustrating a run Scott Dixon's having. He's about to put Scott Dixon down a lap. Yeah, the three Penske cars this weekend right off the truck have kind of been in a league of their own all weekend. And frankly, the Chevys have been pretty strong all weekend because both of the Ed Carpenter cars are running really, really well. They've got a, had a power upgrade that came along in Toronto and they seem to have found a lot of performance here in the last couple of weeks. See Joseph Newgarden there, able to go around the outside of Scott Dixon, and that's where Joseph is so strong right now. He's able to maneuver his car where the traffic is not. If the car goes low, he goes high, vice versa. So he's able to work his way through traffic, and that's where he's just been stretching the gap out on Will Powers, working his way through traffic. Whoa. Tight fit there on the exit against Tony Kanaan, but able to clear him and put another car in between himself and his teammate. And the big story, big picture-wise, with Newgarden and this championship came in with a four-point advantage over Alexander Rossi. Points as they run now, it would blow out to a 31-point advantage heading to Mid-Ohio next weekend. Hearing some radio chatter from Powers Camp that he might have a vibration on the left front tire that could be caused by just having too much understeer in the car. And you wear that front tire, it scrubs across the track and wears it funny, causes some graining, and then causes it to go out of balance. So we heard a little bit of chatter about that, but he's well clear right now of his teammate, Simon Pagano, who's in third about five seconds behind him. One more pit stop to be made. Who's gonna blink first? Who's gonna make it first? Will there be another caution? Had a little bit of everything tonight. Four cautions for 35 laps and one red flag for almost half an hour due to a sprinkle. Erickson yeah. just flew by power on new tires, so guys are coming. And what a strong run it's been for Spencer Pickett and the entire Ed Carpenter racing team running in the top five throughout the race. That's a nice, quick final stop. First one in, Simon Pagano. Second one in among the leaders. Graham Rahal has also made his final stop. Pagano has been running third, still needs a little bit something. He was just asked what changes 
And I think I heard him say nothing. We'll take a look at it here, see if they do any front wing adjustment. Firestone tires, Speedway fuel. No, they will do a little bit of tuning on the front wing. And Pagano is back out waiting for his two Penske teammates to make that final stop and see if he can make up some ground now on fresh tires. I'm a little bit shocked here. Oh, we see Will Power come in. I was just going to say, Whoa. oh, that was way late way out on tight. the outside, and that's going to cost him a lot of time. He had to over slow Dylan getting into the into the pit lane. They need a smooth, flawless stop here to make up for that time. Looking to see if they make any changes. Looks like maybe a turn or so, a front wing, but a smooth stop otherwise for Will Power, Kevin. Here comes the leader making the final stop of the race. It's been a dominant weekend for Team Penske. A little weave as he comes in to hit his marks. The Hitachi Team Penske team going to work. A little bit slow on the left front. Still done in plenty of time with the fuel. And that's a nice, solid, excellent final stop for Newgarden. We'll watch Pagano coming through. We'll see where power cycles out after that mistake coming into the pit lane, I think. That will have allowed Pagano to close up on him. And there it is. He's lost the position to Pagano. So just these little mistakes, these unforced errors that you don't need to make. He had a five second gap on his teammate and he tried to hustle it quicker than he needed to getting into the pits. And he ran wide and had to like basically over slow it before he was going to hit the end of the pit wall. So you just can't make those mistakes. I was just thinking off the top of my head, did he try and pit off four under green? No, no. I think he ran it in too he hard. Yeah, it too he hard. he was it running the apron hard. trying to make up time. Here it is, look. Yeah, he gets in, out. and he's he's in so deep. And oh, that is so close to disaster here. But yeah, just trying to make up time on Joseph Newgarden. That little bit of time gets in too deep. All that excess rubber on the exit right there, he, he barely saves it, but as PT said, Lost time. Simon Pagano had pitted a couple laps earlier than, than Will. Will makes this mistake. And now Simon had gotten around him and is clear of him. James Hinchcliffe, Spencer Pickett. At the moment, this is the fight for fifth. Scott Dixon leads, but is yet to pit for the final time. Really seems like these two cars have been stuck together for about the last 150 laps, battling really hard inside the top five. That's tough there, PT. Every time Spencer Pickett go, chops across James Hinchcliffe's nose, James loses all the air, gets a ton of understeer, the car gets... Yeah, they're trying to lap Mateus Lace three wide going into one. Spencer Pickett stays on the top side. Hinchcliffe gets a nice run down the straightaway. Will he drive it in? He does. Right now with the tires fresh, he's got the grip to really hu Atta hustle boy. it in there. Good job. That's a great move by James Hinchcliffe. He's just over two, two and a half seconds off of Will Power that essentially is running third. So see if he can chase him down and try to get on the podium. Sebastian Bourdais in the Sealmaster entry. Sebastian is running in 12th at the moment and has made his final stop of the race. Ah, uh, Will Power. Penalty. This is a penalty for an improper pit entry. You just, you just can't keep making these little mistakes. I mean, he'll, he'll say it after the race. If we get a chance to interview him, you, got, you can't make these okay, mistakes. Okay, go, go. And then he almost stalls it leaving there, it looks like. And, and we a got yellow. a caution. And a yellow. We're to yellow, we're yellow. To injury. Oh. Ed Carpenter. The night is over. Sorry, guys. I what? got all bottled up and I got dirty air and I just went around. On what has been a fabulous night up until now for the Ed Carpenter Racing Team duo of Ed himself and Spencer Piggott, the Auto Geek cars. Skid marks tell the story right there. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen now. Tires are so important. I think everybody's going to come in, even though stops have happened. I think you take fresh tires again.
And you know who gets lucky by this? Scott Dixon. Dixon yeah. He stayed out, hadn't pitted, looking for that yellow. Now he gets it, stays on the lead lap, and he's going to pit and for new tires. Fresh tires. New Garden and Pagano, if they stay out on these used tires, Dixon's going to have fresh tires. And if I'm anybody back from Dixon, if you got a chance to beat Penske, you take tires. If you're Alexander Rossi running sixth, you haven't had the speed all day, you have to come in and pit and take a chance because that's the only way you're going to make up spots right now. What happened to Ed Carpenter? Check this out. Right at the back there, here he comes through and loses it. Yeah, just four cars all bottled up there side by side, and he got the dirty air. He had a pretty good hit there on the back of the car, broke the front suspension pretty heavy. But man, oh man, that penalty for Will Power just driving through the pits is a couple lap penalty, and the yellow on top of it just adds insult to injury. The one thing you get saved by that, as the yellow comes out, everybody has to slow down. He only loses one lap doing that stop and go penalty, but still, because of that, it's taken any chance of, of winning away. Different angle of the Ed Carpenter crash from Ryan Hunter Race Car. Just lost the rear, just slid away from him. It's strange yellow, yellow, he lost yellow, it yellow. so late on yeah, the exit still. there. You see here right on board Alexander Rossi. Has to has to miss miss Ed Carpenter there, there, but just traffic. Ed said it on the radio, dirty air. Got lost the nose, and as he lost the nose, the back started coming around and unfortunately ruined what was a great day for him. Well, the want, laps now are coming down. We're going to be under 30 laps to go probably when we go green here. Man, I think you got to be on brand new tires if you're going to have a shot at New Garden or Pagano. There's no, no reason why you wouldn't take them if you were anybody further back from any from dixon on back you might as well what about power what about uh, power he's a lap down stay out he's, he's only had what he only had two laps on those tires yeah before but, he had to serve the penalty but if it, if not everybody pits depending on where he's at in line right this is into some graham ray hall radio yeah guys i can see huge flames coming out of this left side header going down the street, just blue flames. Yeah, it's not a good thing, clearly. I don't want to burn the car to the ground, but uh, I also don't want to give up a top step and finish. Some, something going on motor-wise. He says he's got flames coming out of the exhaust, but like his engineer, team manager, Ricardo Nault said, we're not giving up a seventh place, Robin. Well, for the last 15 laps, the thing is you can tell it's the header because it's really making horrible noise and you think it's going to blow up every lap. So he, he lost a lot of speed, too. You can see guys going by and they've been ahead of all night. So he's hanging in there, but it's probably going to be terminal here pretty quick. Well, you got you to gotta keep going now because I think these guys are going to get wild, AJ. Like, these restarts are going to be crazy now. And that, that could breed yellows, and you, you might get a couple yellows in there, run under yellow, and, and nurse at home. Yeah, 30 to go. I mean, at this point, you're not going to lose anything by, by staying out there and trying to go for it. Connor Daly, Santino Ferrucci. Will Power has answered our question. And Scott Dixon on the left. See, Alexander Rossi was running six. PT taking that chance, putting those tires on. Kev? So Will Power releases, and as you mentioned, we see Scott Dixon come in. So that was a big advantage for him. He gets the pit under yellow. Now the question is, is the car good enough restarting in 10 to be able to have any chance of actually he may pick up a position because he's going to jump Alexander Rossi. But Dixon said, it's like being on ice. I'm trying everything to salvage something out of this. Rossi, keep an eye on him. He was the highest runner to come in and take tires here. But it's going to be more than 9 or 10 on the lead lap because the wave around is coming. So there are going to be quite a few still in play here. So 30 laps to go. It's going to be quite the shootout to the finish. Who's going to get this one? Coming to green with 27 laps to go. Behind the overall leader, Joseph Newgarden, is the Sealmaster Honda of Sebastian Bourdais in his 200th IndyCar start. Here we go. I, 
Sebastian Bourdais trying to make a move to get his lap back on fresh tires versus old tires. And look at Hinchcliffe and Page Hinch back there side by side. Dixon on fresh look tires. Look at the fresh tires on these guys. Rossi. Rossi finally gets off the bottom lane. I can't believe it. Trying to get around all these lap cars with this new tire so he can go up there and race with the leaders. Should have done that about 100 laps ago. Finally passing guys on the outside like we're used to seeing him do. Ferrucci ducks to the inside on Connor Daly. Rounds up Mateus Laced on board with Ferrucci. He's in pursuit of Alexander Rossi. Dixon's in good shape too. He's up to fourth already. Look at him fly. Guys on fresh tires are absolutely rocketing through the field. We got a Saturday night shootout on our hands now, boys. And we didn't see it, but James Hinchcliffe was able to clear Simon Pagano and get into second. Does he have anything to repeat last year and go steal a win from Joseph Newgard? He's right there. He's now pulling up on the back of Newgarden as Dixon now is closing in on Paz. He was a lap down mid-race, and I told you, don't ever count him out. 16th pull and a lap down. Unbelievable well, come back. Go. Oh, problem with Colton Herter. We might get another yellow. Something wrong with it. Could be a motor problem, a little bit of dust coming out of the back or smoke, but right now, here's Newgarden. Has pulled away a little bit now from Hinchcliffe. He's got a 1.8 second lead. Bourdais is there, a lap down. Let's relive Scott Dixon's restart. We see here, he's got a bunch of lap cars in front of him to, to get going. Three wide bottom. Got by Graham Rahal, Ryan Hunter Ray. Mateus Leist is the next one. So three cars in a couple of turns. Alexander Rossi, things were a little more uh, hairy up here. Check this out. Finally, he went to the top side and look at all the cars he passed. I've been waiting for that all night. That was epic. Now Dixon. Scott Dixon has got Simon Pagano. Dixon's almost got in the wall there. He's got one foot on the podium here. He's going for second. And maybe a win's not out of the question either. He's got hitch clip right in front of him now, and he's on the move. He's only two seconds back behind Joseph Newgarden. This would be a huge night for Scott Dixon if he was able to snatch this win away from Team Bensky. Four position. By the way, race control is reviewing the restart for numerous reasons and <laughs> numerous drivers. Fancy that. Good luck on that. But Scott Dixon. Look at the high line. Just a horrible night, Paul. He was struggling sideways for half the race. Gets lucky in that yellow, some fresh tires. And look at this, going around the outside of James Hinchcliffe. Whoa. That's not even a, that's not even a contest. Give second to Scott Dixon. Now he's got to calm down. He's got to chase down Newgarden. Newgarden has been a master of defense all night. He's really not succumbed to any pressure from anybody. The next car in line is Bourdais, and he's got to chase down with only 15 laps to go. It's a long gap to bridge here in just 15 laps, but he can do it. I think this is a wonderful example of what a team sport IndyCar racing is. Dixon is the wheel man. But you've got to think about it, Chris Simmons, the race engineer, Mike Hull calling the strategy on the radio, Kate Gunlack, what an awesome effort it is from the nine team on the PNC Bank Honda. And here comes Dixon, he's within 2.2 seconds of Joseph Newgarden. This is why Chip Ganassi and this race team love this guy, a five-time champion. You can never count him out, never give up attitude, struggling all night. Now we see, as usual, when it's time to go, Scott, Dixon rises to the top, into second, still 2.5 seconds away from Joseph Newgarden. It seems like these tires are already starting to go away from him because Joseph Newgarden, that last lap, yeah, was big, two and a half tenths quicker. That's than a big gap to cross in just 12 laps. We got to see if they start catching lap traffic like this right here. How hard does Graham Rahal fight? This could close the gap down quickly. That was pretty Graham critical. Graham Rahal's motor is sick. We think he's got a broken header, 
But if Joseph Newgarden starts coming up on lap traffic, that gap could close immediately. While this chase continues at the front, awesome effort from James Hinchcliffe, one foot on the podium. Pagino will be a little frustrated, but he's still in the top five. Great effort, Spencer Piggott. Rossi's been tough all night. Zach Veach, this is the result he's been waiting for for a while. He's seventh, Ray Hall is eighth. Bourdais in his 200th start is ninth, and Tony Kanaan is in the top 10 for AJ Foyt Racing. That will mean so much to that team. Rossi has recovered. He was struggling all night. He's finally started using the high groove on those stickers, and right now is in six, but that's pretty much where he's run most of the night. And to watch Newgarden go away is going to be very damaging in the points. Oh, Bourdais almost up in the wall right there. Hopefully Bourdais will kind of move out of the way. Give a little bit of love here. No point in fighting. But Newgarden basically has the whole back straightaway yeah. of the lead with eight to go. That lead snuck out to almost three seconds. It is more than three seconds now. But you know what? This second place will feel like a victory to the Ganassi squad considering Scott Dixon was 16th and a lap down at one point in this race. The second place battle's not over yet though. James Hinchcliffe is starting to run down Scott Dixon. Scott is struggling behind Sebastian Bourdais right now, trying to get around him. We see James Hinchcliffe with six to go. His run, Scott Dixon back down. Does he have anything to get around him? Well, I think he does. James has had a good car all night. Dixon has really struggled all night. It just came alive by taking those tires. And here comes Hinchcliffe. I still think Scott Dixon has a loose race car because as soon as he gets that dirty air behind Sebastian Bourdais, he has to lift very early. We see James Hinchcliffe digging around the yellow line. Five to go, chasing down Scott Dixon. Close, super close. And Dixon's really struggling getting by Bourdais. Graham Rahal with the motor right there in front. We know he's off song, and they're having a hard time getting by him. And that's the thing. Sebastian Bourdais not just going to give up because Graham Rahal is fourth position. That's that's eighth place. We oh. saw Scott Dixon get loose. James Hinchcliffe gets loose right behind him. So this battle's no, still going up, on. We're going to go. Less than three miles on what has been a very elongated night here in Iowa due to severe thunderstorms. Looked like Penske team was going to run away with a 1-2-3 two, tonight. Wilt Power made a mistake getting in the pits. Simon Pagano just lost the handle on the go. car. Two laps to go. And that 1-2-3 or potential 1-2-3 has turned into a 1-4-12. Not quite what the captain was looking for. But boy, talk about turning frustration into flag, glory and satisfaction. Flag. Less than a mile to go for Joseph Newgarden. He has led 244 laps tonight in what has been a superb driving performance from the championship leader. He's already got three wins this year. He kicked it off at the season opener. He won in Detroit. He won in Texas. And he wins here in Iowa. The championship leader extends his points advantage. Scott Dixon grabs second. Joseph, uh, James Hinchcliffe third. But it's all about Joseph Newgarden. Hey man, great job in the field. Great job, Charles. Newsflash, uh, Joseph Newgarden's really good here in Iowa. Yeah, yeah he continues his dominance here. Some donuts for these great fans that have stuck this weather out to give uh, to give them uh, something to watch for that motor for next week. Oh, no. But look at the fans. I don't know, I don't know the, the, the number that have stuck around, but thank you, thank you to all of you because it's quarter past one in the morning here, local time in Des Moines. And we finally got a race and we've got a race winner. His name is Joseph Newgarden.
nobody knows what this victory lane feeling is like better than Joseph Newgarden in 2019. It's win number four on the season to respond and answer the challenge from the likes of Alexander Rossi and Simon Pagino with an emphatic victory. His second here at Iowa to add to his 2016 win. And as we said at the top of the show, many thought that that win was one of the pieces of the puzzle that got him the ride with Penske and Kev. Now he's got a win at Iowa for the captain. He's got two here, including a couple of runner-up finishes and another dominating run tonight. He wants to say hello to the crew and the team first for this as well. Uh, this is, by the way, the third time he's led over 200 laps here at Iowa. This was worth what about the process that began about eight, eight hours ago? Worth the wait. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a little dizzy, actually. This place, uh, <laughs> it can take it out of you. Um, but, yeah, this is great to be back here in Victory Lane. Um, let me tell you, Chevy, Chevy brought it tonight. They had uh, all the horsepower in the world. Uh, the reliability, good fuel mileage. They just came out with this C8 Corvette. I don't know if you guys saw this, but I really want to buy one. So thanks to Team Chevy all their work. They do a great job. Um, Hitachi having them on board. I think this. I think we've got three wins with Hitachi this year. So really pumped for those guys. They've been such great supporters of, of Team Penske. Um, but this, this is a team effort. You saw all three cars were fast tonight, and that's what it takes. You've got to have all three of us pushing each other. Um, you know, I was a little down yesterday. I felt like we had the pole car, and we just we didn't get it right. And today. We got it right. That's I was fo so focused last night to make sure that we got today right. Early on, you were battling your teammates. Lap 48, the pass that turned out to be the winning pass, getting past Will Power. Yeah, I mean, uh, I knew we had to be patient at the start. We weren't in the position we wanted to. I, want, I really wanted to start from pole and just, you know, dictate the pace from there. So um, I tried to bide my time. And once we got by Will, it was it was really just about managing tires, trying to make the most of the traffic. It's typical Iowa. Like, you got to get through traffic fast here, and whoever does that the best is uh, normally the guy to beat. And now a 29-point margin in the championship. That's yeah, a little bit better. You know, we got to keep going. It's a long way. Um, it helps, but uh, we got to keep it up. This, this is a long way to go. A lot of guys still in it. Um, you know, you feel the pressure that it's not easy every week to stay on top, and we've got to keep pushing each other to do that. That's what it's going to take to win the championship. Well done. Win number four this season. By the way, that's the same number that Joseph Newgarden won in his championship season two years ago. Robin? We thought Scott Dixon's comeback at Elkhart Lake was something to talk about, but being a lap down in 16th place and finishing second, I don't know what to say. Holy smokes. Uh, you know, second, I thought it would have been 22nd, but huge credit to the team. They uh, they definitely pulled one out there. We stayed long on that on that long run there before that last stop. Caught the yellow and it, and it kind of, you know, put us in the prime position. A uh, ton of people on used tyres. We got new tyres and we were able to march to the front. We couldn't quite get to, uh, you know, Joseph, but, uh, man, I can't say anything else about it. You know, we just had a lot more grip. We were able to get there. Um, this looks like fun. a sprint car restart. Are you a sprint car guy at heart? I love dirt racing for sure, you know, but uh, you can't get much better than a short track here at, at Iowa with the high banks and the high speed, but uh, PNC crew did a phenomenal job to, to pull that out. We were, we were honestly going to be maybe a top 15, so stoked to, to get that and uh, it was a nice recovery. All right, I think he's going to Vegas, Lee Diffie, or is it Dylan Welch next? Yeah. Robin, I'll jump in here with our third place finisher, and that's James Hinchcliffe. So, heard you say on the radio, just you worked on it all all night long and, and salvaged a third. How would you evaluate the night? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think salvage. I think earned it. You know, we obviously started inside the top five. Uh, lost a little bit in that first in, just trying to feel out the car, feel out the track, but uh, the aero car just got better and better as the race went on. You know, we made some really good changes in the pits. We didn't have quite as much tire degradation as we would have had if it was hot, and that's really where we were strong. So we didn't have quite the advantage at the end of the stint that, that we would have had had it been a day race or at least hotter than this. But uh, still, had some really close battles out there. Um, great battles with Spencer and, and Santino early, and man, Scott just made a great call there at the end. A couple more laps, I think we'd have had him, and you know, it's a shame Bourdais was in between us and New Garden at the end. It would have been fun to try and uh, try and battle with him a bit for the win there. But I mean, ultimately, be back on the podium here at Iowa was good. Can't believe it's our first one of the year, but proud of the guys and uh, looking forward to Mid Ohio now. Yeah, great effort for sure for the five team and season best third for James Hinchcliffe. He hadn't even had a top five, so to get a podium is fantastic for Hinch. But there is Roger Penske, the captain, celebrating with the winning team, the number two team, the Hitachi Chevrolet of Joseph Newgarden. We'll hear from more drivers when we come back. Team Penske and Joseph Newgarden celebrating in victory lane at Iowa Speedway. The Penske cars have been strong all weekend long, including the car of Will Power, started in the front row, led the second most laps, still in contention late in the race, and then the penalty for improper entry on the pit lane. What happened? Yeah, man, I just I went 
went a bit wide, then you get the marbles, and once you get the marbles on the tyres, it was like, that was ridiculous. Uh, I had no, no chance. Uh, very unfortunate. Uh, was it for going over that line, or was it for going over the... I, ca I can't remember. <laughs> it was, which line was it for going over? Because if it's for going over that line, that's ridiculous. But if it's for going back up on the track, absolutely should have a penalty. And a rough finish for Will Power, who comes home 15th after having a chance at a podium. Now it is on to Mid-Ohio. And Will's still asking Kevin which one was it. He'll find out from race control as we revisit the results. And a New Garden Dixon Hinchcliffe podium. A great surprise there, but there's some personal bests as you pick your way through the top ten. Yeah, you got Spencer Piggott there, first top five of the season, and Zach Beach, previous best finish. He had two eighth-place finishes, so to get a seventh place. And Tony Kanon talked yeah. about it at the beginning of the day. Wanted, a top, wanted a top wanted ten. Top 10. Marcus Erickson, you got to give a shout-out to him. Another good finish, but Santino Ferrucci, not the finish that he I think he deserved. He was... Super exciting all night to watch, but comes home at 12. And Connor Daly, give a shout out. Smooth race, ran all but one lap. A 13th place finish for that race team. Something to keep building on. Sure is, and that caps an eventful day and evening here in Iowa. But the big story, especially for Joseph Newgarden, he turns a four-point lead into a 29-point lead. Pagano drops 20 points. He's now 58 back, and Scott Dixon inside that 100-point yeah, marker. Scott Dixon recovered for a second-place finish, but lost ground to Joseph Newgarden. And Will Power kind of pretty much out of the picture now. That 100-point marker is, is about as far as you want to fall out. Hey, PT, we've got to thank our little mate in the middle here, the yeah. Dinger. AJ Dinger, well done. Super to have you on your first IndyCar call. Did you enjoy it? It was awesome, guys. It was a... Uh... It was a special weekend to be calling this race with you guys. It was lovely for us to uh, to have you here with us as well. Townsend Bell will be back as we turn our attention to Mid-Ohio. Next weekend, it's on NBC at Sunday, July 28 at 4 Eastern. Remember that, 4 Eastern on NBC. It's the Honda Indy 200 at Mid-Ohio. I'll be away doing track and field. The national championship's back here in Des Moines, Iowa. Kevin Lee will have the call. And we say congrats to the points leader, Joseph Newgarden. Another win in Iowa.